Welcome to the Super Arcade Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into this week's Super Arcade Show! Hello everybody, hello, 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 welcome in. Heath. Hello everyone, how is it? It's time for another Super Arcade Show. I am I'm blessed this week to um, have the, the lovely company of one of my favorite. Uh, I have the fantastic, the lovely, the absolutely awesome, the wonderful Sam! Welcome in, Sam, hello! I am all of those things, but I'm also the Doctor of Ceremonies and the Master of Thugonomics. This is the Super Arcade Hi. Show. We have a special guest this week, Andrew. I don't want to take up too much of his time, so I think we should just bring him in here right now! Right now! Should we? Now? Now! Let's do it. Here he is! It's Dave Cook! Hello, Dave! Welcome in, Dave. How oh, unexpected. Oh, my Lord. It wasn't like your name was on the screen already or anything. I was, <laughs> I was just loading up a game on my laptop and somehow over here, I don't know how. <laughs> this Someone is, dragged this is me into this room. Uh, <laughs> if, you don't know Dave, if you don't know Dave, I have just described him on Twitter while advertising this show. He's a former games journalist and a certified writer of fictional words. He is the author behind the hit comic series called Topia which is soon to become its own TV series. He is also a master with in-depth knowledge about side-scrolling games throughout history. And tonight, he is here to dance for your entertainment. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lovely. Um, did, did that all fit into one tweet, Sam? I, I, how did you manage? I mean, that's I'll be honest. Of I've, I've right? changed the tweet versus what I said here. <laughs> and to know what I said, you'll need to go and check out my Twitter. So there you go. There you that's go. called uh, cross-platform advertising, Andrew. Nice, nice, nice. Um, welcome to the show, Dave. Welcome, man. Welcome, man. Um, yeah, we're all, uh, we'll start off start off the show as we usually do. Uh, we play a little catch-up. But first, as always, a uh, quick nod to our previous guest last week. Uh, a lovely thank you to Jez from The Jez Show for joining us last week. If you want to catch that show, make sure and jump onto our YouTube channel. You can catch up there, uh, which is youtube.com forward slash Arcade Glasgow. Or of course, if you're a um, person who likes to just listen to things and not use their eyes, uh, you can obviously go to Spotify and jump on there. Just search for The Super Arcade Show and you'll find it there too. Uh, not, but moving not on to, to this be, week. Not oh, to be sorry, very... Sam. Uh, particular, but I feel like people that listen to podcasts still use their eyes, just not Did for they? that particular <laughs> task. I, I assumed you just walked around with your eyes closed uh, while listening to, to play, just to really, really hone the senses and, and enjoy it as yeah. much as possible. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I like to sit in dark rooms and listen to podcasts. <laughs> Anyway, um, this week we're joined, of course, by Dave, and we'll start off, um, as we always do, by checking in with how everyone's doing, uh, catching up with what you've been up to lately, and of course, um, I always ask the question, what video games have you been playing this week? So Sam, shall we go with you again? <laughs> what have you been up to this week? Um, I've not seen Squid Game before anyone asks. <laughs> uh, and at this point, it feels like I need to make a point of not watching it. No, that's not true. Um, I've not watched Squid Game, even though everyone's been talking about it. I'm sure both of you will mention it at some point. Um, awesome. I've had very mixed reviews from my girlfriend in that she was like, you need to see it. And then two days later, she said, I am crying. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, I mean, could be good or bad crying, you know, it could go either way, you never know. <laughs> but it's now the most watched program on Netflix, the highest sure. grossing program on Netflix sure. ever. It was number one in 60 different countries. So um, yep. that's how my week's gone, learning stats about a show I've never watched. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, it's been it's been week two of multimedia journalism. It's still been quite fun. Uh, yesterday was was editing Vox Pops for the first time, which was nice. great. Great job. Nice. Um, and today has been a day of getting soaked by the rain uh, to go and to go and purchase something that Michelle put on the arcade Instagram, and she knew this uh... would happen. And yeah, I still went and did it. <laughs> uh, I went to our lovely friends across the river in Icebox. Uh, if you don't know Icebox, it is like a, a community-focused event space uh, for local artists and local events. But the front of house is also essentially like a second-hand store. So there's a bunch of clothing for sale. There's VHS tapes for sale, CDs, DVDs, all all the different things. And they also have random little curios and action figures. So what I saw was this, and I went <laughs> and bought it. This is the Ring Announcer Special Edition playset from WCW. I haven't checked wow. the year. 
But given it's Goldberg and Kevin Nash, I'd guess 1999, possibly, 98. I think so, yeah. And yeah. I did do my research. Um, for me and Gene Oakland here in the middle, they only made two WCW action figures for him. Ooh. This version, and then a version that came with the ring playset. So I was like, this is a justifiable purchase. No one tell my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> She's too busy what, crying at Squid Game anyway, mate. He's so crying at Squid Game. Okay. So, yeah. Um, uh, that's been my week, basically. I didn't go and buy it, Michelle, and it's your fault. And I told everyone <laughs> that it was your fault. Um, you knew what you were doing by posting that on the arcade Instagram. I literally walked all the way to Icebox from home just to buy it in the rain. Uh, and it now sits here. I mean, it's like a 20 minute walk. It's not, it's just, 30. just to get people. It's a 30, sorry, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> How awesome. I got fried chicken on the way home. <laughs> good, glad to hear it. Dave, good. How are, oh, how are you? Sorry, Dave, uh, sorry, Sam. No. Yeah. No, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I, I've been playing a lot of games actually this week, uh, trying to chill out a bit in between writing. I've been quite full on with the comic writing, which I'm sure we'll get into later, but um yeah Why? just having some bank time which is quite rare um yeah and just sort of completely completed two games this week um Ooh. death loop was one of them nice um which i, I kind of have kind of mixed feelings on now i've finished it um don't think it's the 10 out of 10 a lot of people said it was but it's still a very interesting uh, game um yeah. i think i just need time to you know unpack it and um yeah. Yeah. And also uh, Castlevania, Circle of the Moon. I've got the advanced collection, you know, the old Game Boy Advance ones. Um, love that that trilogy. So, yeah, really cool to go back and, yeah, play those. Um, I'm getting really angry at Monkey Ball that came out on the Switch yesterday. <laughs> um, I forgot, I forgot yeah. how much I love, hate that game. It's, um, it's so rage-inducing, isn't it? It's so oh, frustrating. Totally. The, the level of skill that you, you don't get, it's so accessible, but at the same time, you need to, you, you get like halfway through the game, you're like, oh my god, why can't I just get past this one? It's, oh, it's so frustrating. Oh, it's That's like, great. I know what you want me to do, I just can't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I played okay. I played the new one uh, last week. Um, Sega gave us a, a copy of the game to play on stream, so uh, I got to play it um, on PS5 last week, right. which was amazing. So I uh, really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Good, good. Um, my week, Andrew! Uh, actually, yeah, thanks Simon, <laughs> I thought we were going to go there. Uh, yeah, my week has been, uh, it's been good, it's been good, I've been getting, I've, uh, I've got so many Playstations, I've tidied a lot of them away, you can't see, but if I move ever so slightly, if I turn, you'll see a Playstation, and I'll turn again, you'll see another Playstation, and so there's two PS3s over there, there's two PS1s, sorry, three PS1s, there's another PS3 down here, there's a stack of three PS2s over here. I'm just, like, swimming in Playstations right now, um, and trying to figure out which on one's your actually lovely carpet. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's quite the um, quite the eyeful. Uh, <laughs> it's basically just to pad out the room a little because it's just a box and it sounds really echoey if I don't have um, a carpet down. So that's why we got that. And it's also just for comfort for me, you know, being in the studio. So um, aside from that, like I said uh, last week, um, Sega gave us a copy of Super Monkey Ball. Uh, last night I played uh, Art of Rally for the first time as well, which was great. Um, Aside from that, I haven't touched Genshin for a week and a half, so Nadia will be disappointed in me. Um, but instead, I've been playing Judgment um, on the Series X, so the spin-off from the Yakuza series, uh, which has been phenomenal. I've been really enjoying going around Kamurocho again, which is really nice. And uh, I'm, I'm working up to, to play the sequel, which just came out, Lost Judgment, of course. Um, I keep getting distracted by the arcade machines within the game, so I keep going and playing like Virtua Fighter and Super Hang On and stuff like that instead of actually doing story. So, um, it, they're like it's side quests galore, <laughs> but I'm just playing all the old games that's in the game. It's just it's amazing. Um, so oh, yeah, dude, that's, I, did that's that in, uh, I did that in Like a Dragon, you know, um, yeah. the yeah. seventh one where they have the property management mini game. I spent yeah. hours on that, and I was like, oh yeah, wasn't that? <laughs> An actual whole game to finish here. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> I think that's that's one of the blessed things about the Yakuza series is is just the little touches that Sega put in to be able to um, to see the old stuff as well, which is really really good fun. So yeah, looking forward to getting back into that um, later this week or this weekend. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, apart from that, nothing much. Um, made a few changes to Arcade. Uh, I've added. Um, I've for been those fired of you who... again. I've been fired again. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, um, for those of you who are visiting this weekend, thank you if you've booked in advance. Um, we've got, uh, we've, we've moved things around a little. I've added a new master system in, which is the original master system. I got a copy of Transbot, uh, which is the card based game instead of a cartridge. Um, so that's available to play this weekend. Um, and uh, there's a few new light games which I'm very excited about. Safari Hunt, which is built into the, uh, I have to say that really carefully there, Safari mm. Hunt, uh, which is built into the Master System. <laughs> um, I've been really enjoying that. So check that out if you're coming down this weekend um, to Arcade. But aside from that, that's that's pretty much just been the, the norm for me. Um, pretty much a normal week. Nothing crazy, nothing um, wonderful going on. Uh, however, in the world of video games, there's been a lot of stuff going on. So I think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll crack on and do our usual and we'll chuck on uh, the, the gaming news. This is what's been happening this week in gaming. There we go. Beautiful. Seem seamless. I, I, Hopefully I we'll all that. have very varied opinions as three bearded men in black shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, at least, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I'm, there were so many jokes in my head, and I wanted to say one or two, but they were like they were on the line of being too far. So no, let's, let's move on. Um, first up is the uh, the news uh, that um, eFootball, uh, the rebrand, I suppose you would call of Pro Evolution Soccer, uh, was released uh, late. Oh, I think it was Thursday, actually. I think it was a week ago today. Uh, oh, what the heck? I've been disconnected. No? Am I still connected? Guys? I can I'm yeah, alive. Still, you can still hear me? <laughs> I can hear yeah. I can hear and see you move. Fantastic. It's and says we are audible on Twitch, so that's fine. Good. Good. Okay, sorry. The the restream's just scaring me by being a pop up saying I've been disconnected. So fantastic. I'm sure um it's fine. Yeah, everything's fine. Mesh says still what, here, so we're good. What were you saying before we went live, Dave, about us appearing very professional and put together? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll still give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Uh, everyone, okay. Ha everyone has hiccups, right? Everybody <laughs> has those days, as, as uh, my favorite uh, Hannah Montana once said, I believe. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, it's better than your John Cena quotes that you usually pull off of Twitter, so. Uh, this is, I can so find sad. some now if you want. Oh, no, please don't. Like, why did I say anything? Uh, anyway, going back to it. Um, yeah, eFootball released, eFootball 2022. Um, and it released, it's, it's not really a, full release, I would say. It's free to play. Um, it's available cross-platform. Um, however, when it, uh, when, it <laughs> when it released, it was a broken mess, which we've now come to, ex um, to expect, really, from video games, I think. Um, so I've got, a, I've got a clip here. I'll just play it in the background um, while we chat over it. So, um, oh, shh, quietly. Um, yeah, so um, Konami released uh, eFootball 2022 last Thursday. Um, players have been coming in reporting that it's a glitchy mess. This is uh, obviously just before a match where the players are playing the national, uh, sorry, singing the national anthem, like this, uh, <laughs> for no reason. Um, there's, uh, there's the character models are a mess. Apparently, the mouth movements are not right. Like when they go for celebrations, they're just like going ah. Even Ronaldo, you can tell by his like the twitch on his face. He knows it's not right. He's like, what am I? Yeah, it's, um, I played it, I downloaded it. I thought I would do the research properly. I downloaded it on my PS5 and went and had a few games. And it was okay for me. It was it was fine. It wasn't it wasn't terrible. Um, there wasn't as many, <laughs> look at that referee, sorry. <laughs> Help. That's my favorite one. <laughs> He's in the grass. He's just like, oh, that's, that's so good. Um, but when I played it, it was fine. It wasn't that bad. Um, but uh, it's actually been rated on Steam as one of the lowest ever ratings ever. It's, it's eight percent. It's sitting on Steam. I know I, I, that was a that was a few days ago. I don't know if it's went up at all after some um, sort of patches and and, uh, and bit fixes. But um, it was eight percent last week when it released initially, which is terrible. Um, I believe off the back of, off the top of my head, the um, lowest rated game before that. I can't remember the name of the game, but it was like twelve percent. So it wasn't. <laughs> It's actually even worse than the lowest rated game at all. Um, so, so yeah, this this release is a, is a broken mess, and um, and supposedly they're fixing it. But um, what I wanted to chat with you guys about was um, off the back of this, I, I read some other interesting articles where it was talking about how uh, video game, sort of sports licenses within video games, um, are just going to one company these days. So take your NBA for example, you've only got. Um, 
to 2K who are doing NBA games now. Is that right, Sam? Uh, you're right and you're wrong at the same time. Okay. Uh, EA Sports have taken a year off from producing. Ah. I believe was the last I'd heard uh, that they were taking a year out so they could make sure that their next one was was even better. Uh, so basketball wise, they should be coming back. Should. Um, should. If if we want to, if you want me to keep saying words. Uh, in terms of wrestling games, there's more competition coming soon with the arrival of AEW releasing a video game next year, WWE That's taking true. a year off to try and make theirs as good as they can. Uh, but football wise, it's it's definitely football wise in both senses, American and the American rest of and, the world yeah, yeah, um, yeah. has definitely become a monolith. Absolutely. Um, I think NHL as well is only there's only one um, developer making games for NHL as well, I believe. Off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, is, uh, is, is that a good thing? Do you think like having a monopoly over one sport as a, as a developer is a good thing? Or is the competitiveness missed? Is that something that needs to be, needs to come back basically to kind of push the companies forward? What, what are your guys' thoughts on that? So like, see with like the um, N, NFL. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you've seen like over the last few years, right? They, those games have just become lazier and lazier and lazier. And I'm not, I mean, games are hard work to make, right? But they're stripping out features year on year and then adding in features that they stripped out years ago and saying, hey, look at this new feature. It's like, it's not. You took it out years ago and you're just putting it back in to make it look like you're doing new stuff. And, you know, they've got those Switch editions, which I think are called like legacy editions of like FIFA and yeah, stuff. Which, like, yeah. It's like last year's game with just a roster update, but full price or near full, pri full price. And I think people are really starting to notice like the, the press is certainly not letting EA get away with the FIFA thing anymore. Like they, they're really calling them out. So I think like, yeah, competition definitely, it keeps, it keeps people sharp and it keeps them actually yeah. innovating in their games where the NFL is the best example of why having Monopoly is not a good thing. Um, I, I mean, I'm kind of sad about the Pez thing, you know, about the eFootball thing, but same. at the same time, it's like, what did you expect releasing a game in this kind of state? At least, at least it wasn't paid for. That's the one saving grace, right? You know, it's not a yeah. fee to pay game as they call it. Um, <laughs> it's not like uh, it's not like cyberpunk or anything. Like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, and Even that was unfortunate that too. There was a whole oh, that, that's a whole issue, but um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, this will get better over time, right? It's a live service, as they call it. Um, that's what they're trying to do now. Yeah, they've changed it from uh, from a yearly. Well, not it's still a yearly release, but they're. Um, I think FIFA Ultimate Team has changed the landscape completely when it comes to, to that kind of thing. So. I will um, say, with regard to the 8% rating, um, and going back to Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky and whatever other game you want to attribute this to, the low ratings are not, like, there are games that are far worse that won't have as bad of a rating, but they don't have the same name value or notoriety attached to the release. If you said there's a new football game coming out, it's free to play, it's licensed with all the biggest, like, names in the world, you'd go, right, okay, that should be quite good, but if it's not, then I understand because it's a free-to-play game. But it is being made by Konami and is the, pre the uh, you know, posthumous relative of Pez. So you're expecting a certain level. And, and that means that people are going to spitefully review it badly. And I think, in the words of John Cena's tweet from seven hours ago, <laughs> we need to find the patience to establish an environment for open dialogue about these sorts of things. It's uh, wise words, wise words. My point also was valid, by the way, but I was glad to <laughs> chew on. Also, they're making a TV show about his character from Suicide Squad. That's pretty cool. Oh, really? Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. So, uh, no spoilers, please. Thank you, guys. Um, I anyway, seen, I haven't seen the first one. <laughs> Never <laughs> mind the better version. So, you don't want to. You don't want to. Um, keeping it Konami, uh, Konami have actually, they're, they're, I mean, give Konami the benefit of the doubt. I think they're, they're going under a, a corporate restructure right now, which is something else that's been in the news lately. Um, and they, they're they not really focused on games as, as much as they used to be. They used to be a big powerhouse with Metal Gear, uh, with, uh, oh, my brain's just gone, Castlevania, Silent Hill, um, as well as Pro Evolution Soccer and, and various other types. Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's why I put yeah. this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Konami are going through a bit of a transitional period, they've restructured cor uh, their, their corporate headquarters and they're trying to push back into games. What I read um, lately is they've actually been focusing a lot on Panchico, uh, Panchico machines lately, because they make a lot of money from that overseas. 
um, and so they they're being a bit lazy with their games. Um, case in point, uh, the uh, the last Metal Gear game <laughs> from uh, 20, was it 2019 or 2018? Um, Metal Gear Survival is, I think. Yeah, it about, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too far ago. It wasn't it was only a few years ago now, but it was obviously Metal Gear um, Survive was minus Kojima. So um, he'd, he'd obviously the big falling out had happened at that point. So that was the first game they did without him. But uh, Konami have come out and said, right, we're working on a new Metal Gear uh, game. We're working on a um, new Castlevania game. We're working on, um, I think they said, three uh, or two or three different games in the Silent Hill franchise as well. Um, so Konami are pushing back and trying to trying to get back into games again. But I'm still taking that with a pinch of salt. I mean, they've not had a good run of things lately with, with, with any of the any of those three franchises that I've mentioned. Um, so, yeah, do we do we really want another Metal Gear game without Kojima? Like, uh, especially after Metal Gear Survive, what are you guys' thoughts on it? So, yeah, I actually thought about this before before the before coming on here, and I, I remember I, something came to me. Like, I, I used to be a games journalist, like down in England, around about 2010, 2011, and that was around about the time when like Japanese publishers were like, we need to appeal more to Western gamers right so let's get more western developers making our games and that led to things like dmc devil may cry <laughs> grin did like a uh, bionic commando reboot which wasn't that yeah, well received yeah, that was stuff like that too, right yeah 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 and there was like never dead uh koei did quantum theory which was japanese uh a japanese take on what a western gears game was and it, it didn't work out either mm. totally it was kind of not right and it was okay but you know um so one of the exceptions to that was actually Mercury Steam, right? Who are bringing out Metroid Dread. They're based in Spain right. and they did Castlevania Lords of Shadow. And I actually thought a lot of people don't like that game because it was a bit too much like God of War, but it was a pretty well made game. You know, Kojima Productions helped out on it. Um, so it shows like if Konami can rarely get it right when they farm out IPs to the right people. So, like, I know like one of the rumored projects is like a Metal Gear 3. Metal Gear Solid 3 remake made in China. That's right. By Chinese That's right yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. They could do it. Again, I'm a benefit of the doubt guy. And I, I kind of weirdly liked Contra Rogue Core. And I'm a Contra diehard fan. And I quite liked it. Nice. Um, nice. Which is probably <laughs> blasphemy. But I don't know. Like, I don't know if we need another Metal Gear. It seems like the fifth one was kind of conclusive, right? But yeah. Um, I'm always kind of interested to see how another developer plays in someone else's sand pit. If that makes sense, you know, like playing around with their ip and stuff and sometimes it works um so but yeah i mean konami's burned us all before right <laughs> they have many yeah. a time um and yeah i mean kojima's doing well on his own well i say well on his own death stranding is death stranding you know it's uh <laughs> it's a beast in itself um and uh we'll get onto a little bit about that later on uh sam any thoughts i certainly don't need another metal gear game <laughs> personally I'm, just I'm, personally I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm waiting to see at what point Dave realised that I'm a fraud for being here. That I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the wrong person to have on any show relating to games. But So I personally don't need another Metal Gear Solid game because I've not played any of the you're, previous ones. So You're the everyman. You're the you're I, the one that the chat relate to more. Um, well, because thank, you're thank just, you. We're, we're massive the chat nerds. Of people here oh, watching yeah. us talk about games. <laughs> <laughs> The um, read method is here in chat giving legitimate opinions about Metal Gear Solid games, and that's who I'm supposed to be relatable for. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you're listening to this back in an audio-only format, you can check it out live every Wednesday from 7 p.m. and be part of our live chat. Again, more cross-platform promotion, and that is why I'm here. <laughs> um, read methods pointed out a reboot of the first Metal Gear Solid um, would be would be great. Uh, there's there's rumors about again, just like you're saying about Metal Gear Three. Um, the, uh, another HD remaster of, of sorts of the original games is, is on the cards as well. So you don't know. Uh, Konami might 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 pull uh, might pull that out of the bag. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, take it with a bit of salt. We'll see what happens. A good litmus test to see how much of uh, not not like I mean I am not an auteur of anything, never mind of games, but to see how soulless something like Metal Gear is without Hideo Kojima. Or if Konami can reproduce that, knowing how the games were made in the first place. How much do they actually need that initial visionary in order to remake something like that? Even if you are literally remaking something that has already existed. So that would be an interesting just 
like like thing to look at. I know with a lot of the with a lot of the remasters and remakes actually in particular, they tend to bring in the original um, art directors, the original um, directors themselves, creators, directors, everything, uh, producers, etc. So Final Fantasy VII, I think, was the, the big one. Um, they tried to bring as many people back as they could who actually worked on the original game, so it would maintain that vision and that feel. But um, that's been quite successful. Um, so fingers crossed Konami can do something good for us um, and get back to, to making good games. Anyway, um, keeping it Kojima, uh, the uh, um, the big news coming out of Sony this week is that they've uh, they've introduced um, game trials to the PlayStation Store, specifically for PS5 and specifically for two games. Uh, so Death Stranding Director's Cut and Sackboy A Big Adventure are, uh, are available to try before you buy um, <laughs> on the PlayStation 5. Um, they're only available as trials until August, uh, sorry, until October 28th, so it's the end of the month, just about the end of the month. Um, and the, 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 the thing that, that like stood out for me from uh, the news was that the trial period is six hours for Death Stranding and five hours for Sackboy. But that trial period starts from the minute you hit the download button, which is crazy um, because obviously everyone's internet speed's different. Um, and, and it could take you several hours to just download one of those games. Just for example, Death Stranding is just about 70 gigabytes in size, 68 if you want to be exact. And then um, Sackboy is, is a good th over 30 gigabytes as well. So um, I don't, I personally, I don't see it as a viable way of teasing people or getting them to, to buy the game um, because everyone's experience will be different. You might only get like two hours of the game once you finish downloading it. Um, I have decent internet speed and my yeah. my PlayStation is Ethernet connected to the wireless. So and it would still take me two hours to download probably even Sackboy, realistically. So yeah. like it, it, there is one hundred percent technology available to PlayStation because they use it in other formats that they can start it from the moment the download finishes as opposed mm -hmm. to starts. There is no reason that it is or once you just start start well. the software, you know once you and then like initialize the game for the first time, that's the that would be the click to say, right, okay, you started your trial. Um, Dave, what do, what do you think about this? This is pretty I, mad. I, I'm just trying to get my head around that. That That is such a strange like decision, right? Because I, I, I think know. they overestimate bandwidth and stuff. Not not everyone is there yet. I mean, I, th I think a lot of us, like, you know, certainly, I suppose, like, in the West, we think, oh, everyone's got internet and everyone's got access to, like, it's not, that's not necessarily true. I mean, I kind of live out yeah. in the sticks where my internet constantly um for the longest time was going down until we got it upgraded it was like a nightmare um so i just yeah i don't know i mean it's quite a big file size uh and if you're not going to get the full amount of time i don't know how compelling that is as a you know are you, are you really going to buy yeah. death stranding certainly i played that game right and the intro for that is very slow it's it depends what the vertical yeah. slice looks like you know what what part of the game it is um so, i don't know yeah i guess we'll see I'd be interested well, to see if they released any metrics afterwards, you know, like if it, if it worked. If it worked and uh, people actually did go for it, yeah. yeah. Um, the interesting thing they also put out was that uh, if you purchase any DLC for the games while you're while you're in your game trial, then um, you're not allowed to get that money back. Um, that will, what, that will still exist anyone... on your account, but yeah. <laughs> well, why would anyone buy the DLC? I know, right? You play Sackboy and you get some costumes. And you're like, right, okay, I've, I've I've spent my money on that. Oh, my trial's finished. Uh, right, I have to buy the game now. Uh <laughs> That's got to just be a disclaimer in case someone does that, right? That because that it's why hilarious. why would you do that? <laughs> but that that I mean, down, with the download size of the of each of the games, that is, you're downloading the full game. So you know, you're talking about Death Stranding, depending on how they cut it, but it will be the full game, and it will be as far as you can get in however many hours you've got from start to finish. Um, oh, so right. that's, that's yeah, madness. that makes more sense. It's not and like a demo. Game. It's not like a demo version. No, it's the full version of the game. It's just mad. And then presumably, I guess, if you do want to buy it, it's just you download that last little license key file. <laughs> yeah. To unlock it, right? it. Uh, yeah, That makes exactly, more sense. Exactly. It's, 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 huh. it's a, it's a, I don't know what Sony were thinking, frankly. Um, like giving players the ability to try a game before they buy it is, is, is a good idea, I feel. I feel like, you know, maybe a two or three hour trial before i know obviously steam have uh refund policies epic do the same as well on pc if you're not happy with the game after having played a specific amount of time you can get a full refund 
Um, I think it's two levers, isn't it? If I remember rightly. Um, so if Sony instigated something like that, yeah, cool. But this is this is crazy. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. It's uh, it's running for the month, so you've got until October twenty eighth to go and download those games um, and give them a try. Um, so yeah, madness. Hey, thanks, Sony. <laughs> right. Um, Thank moving you, on. Overlords. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, um, the, probably the second biggest news piece I thought um, of the week was the reveal of the final Smash Bros um, Ultimate character um, as part Waluigi? of the DLC Fighter Pack. It wasn't Waluigi, <laughs> as much as everybody still wants Waluigi, it wasn't. Um, but it was a nice surprise. Um, Nintendo uh, came out and they introduced uh, the final character. Oh no, that's the wrong video. Uh... Took that news piece out. Um, they introduced their new character, which is Sora from the uh, Disney Kingdom Hearts uh, franchise, of course, uh, also made by Square Enix. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a nice surprise. I mean, especially Disney usually being quite protective of its IPs, of its, um, you know, its, its property. Uh, it was nice to see that they'd, uh, they'd collaborated with, with Nintendo. Smash is a weird sort of game because it has... It has like little bits and pieces from other games as well. Like there's collaborations with with other um, companies um, that you wouldn't expect because um, there's like you've got um, Street Fighter characters now. You've got Tekken. Well, Tekken's kind of it's Bandai Namco, so Tekken on Tekken anyway. But um, there's just it's it's such a strange one. Um, but yeah, really happy to see Sora. Uh, what were you guys' thoughts on it? Yeah, it made sense. It seemed like um, I don't know if you guys I, I haven't hadn't followed like the Sora hype um, as closely, but I understand like he was quite a sought after character for like the longest he time. He was. Um, yeah. They went back to they did a thing in the presentation where uh, not in this, not in Ultimate, but in um, Smash for the Wii U and 3DS, they had a website where you could actually request fighters to be added to the game, and Nintendo would take that list and then pick the ones that they knew people wanted. And apparently Sora was one of the top picks for that game, and they just waited until this release, until Ultimate, to actually put them in, which is really interesting. That's cool, yeah, I suppose it's quite a nice way to end it, you know, like, uh, the, the, the... I mean, it's crazy, like, 80-odd 80, 80 characters now or something like that? Like, that's, that's uh, impressive. 82, it's mental, yeah, yeah. And, and like um, you said, like, for such a wide range of publishers, I mean, how often do you see that many companies play nice together these days, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, it's, it's it's probably Nintendo getting their big wallet out, you know, and saying, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and Disney are like, yeah, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, 82 characters. It's bigger than any other fighting game ever made, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so hats off to Sakurai, um, the, uh, the creative mind behind um, Smash Ultimate and its pre predecessor as well. Um, and... And yeah, I would like to see if if we could have one more character, any character from any franchise, what would your picks be to be added as a surprise? If if they like if Nintendo did the one more thing at the end of their um oh, the end of their, if they their end, the forbidden what would it door, be? Andrew. Yeah, who would you have, Sam? Who would you have, who would you have as your, your character for Smash? Oh, I'm trying not to just pick my obvious answers. <laughs> the things the only games I talk about ever. <laughs> What would no. that be? Uh, well, you're new to the show, Dave. Uh, ah. the, the things that I basically always end up talking about is normally Assassin's Creed, because that's the game franchise I've spent the most time with. Uh, so outside of just saying that, the uh, the first name that came to mind was Mezagog, which is the villain from Power Rangers Dino Thunder, so that doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, wow. Although it's a great name. I feel like it's a name that fits Mezagog with... Uh, Mezagog with smash bros um uh, my my other answer based on the conversation we had last week about the last of us is one of the spore creatures from that that's my answer <laughs> just watching mario get eviscerated by one of these spore, spore <laughs> <laughs> ripped in half. oh man i don't know why uh, my mind went straight to that <laughs> it's an un unrequented violence <laughs> uh dave who would be your pick uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be cliche as well for me, but probably oh. um, Axel Stone from 
Streets of Rage. Nice, very nice. Throw some nice. pipes, throw some daggers, uh, eat a chicken for health, you know, all the so good stuff. Much, yeah, so much um, potential in, in that kind of, yeah, yeah, totally. Nice. And the stage would um, be Mr. X's penthouse and you could knock people out the windows and stuff. Ooh, that would be, that'd that'd be, be nice. Fun. That'd be good. Yeah, what about yeah. yours? Um, I, um, I actually would, so one of the uh, one of the other reveals as part of the the update <clears throat> was the um, was a costume for the me. So one of the me costumes was revealed to be Doom Slayer or Doom Guy. So I would bring Doom Guy in properly as a full on character. I think that'd be pretty epic. Um, imagine just the BFG just dropping down. That'd be so much fun. Sorry, Sam, go for it. <laughs> so yeah, Doom Guy would be my pick. Although uh, having him as a as a me costume is pretty cool as well. I think that was a. That was my probably my favorite part of the the uh, the announcement from Nintendo Store. So yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, hats off to Nintendo. Um, Smash has been was released in twenty eighteen, um, so that game's been going three years. So to to have such longevity, um, I mean, not huge longevity, but to be able to still have people playing it day in day out and have it as popular as it is, and to be releasing characters all the way up until now, um, is absolutely fantastic. So. Well, hats off to Nintendo and well done Saturday. Yeah. Can we get the same for Mario Kart, please? Can we just get um, all the DLC for Mario Kart now? That'd be fantastic, please. Thank you. I once mm -hmm. had a theory about, um, you know how the, you know Super Mario Maker. Yeah. I was like, me and my mate were just chatting one time on 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 chat, and I was like, hey, what if they what if they did Super Mario Kart Maker? How how oh. badass would that be? Just like oh, building tracks and so oh, great. Yeah. Man. Um. I mean, you kind of you've almost got that with the home edition, you know, the with the sort of uh, augmented reality version of Mario Kart. So you can, yeah, kind of got a, a step in the direction there, but we'll see. I, I think if Nintendo ever announces Mario Kart Nine, it's going to be the most insane thing ever. I believe with all the experience they have from Smash and stuff in that now as well. Right, I think that's just we we <laughs> we bought enough time for Saturn Return. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Oh, is the show not over? Sorry. <laughs> uh, have I missed the video game section? Oh, what a shame. I, uh, oh, no. no. <laughs> uh, so I now have two different packages for people in my building. <laughs> One of which I've had for three days now, even though I put a note through the door saying I have your package, which is from Boots, by the way, which is totally not concerning. And on top of that, uh, we have like a person that cleans our stairwell as part of the like... Um, Factors. Factor, yeah. Factoring, right? And yeah. everyone's got little doormats, and the cleaner will just move the doormats to the side. So I am using that as an indicator to know when my neighbors across the road get back, and it hasn't, the doormats not been put back. So I've now got this weird thing of when do I start assuming they've died because they haven't got whatever's in that boots package? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. You just does pharmaceuticals, and it's like really important drugs. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, you could just go outside and sell them in the East End of Glasgow, so easy peasy. No problem. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm back. <laughs> yes, anyway, uh, thank you, Nintendo. Thank you, Sakurai, um, which was the hashtag going around on Twitter a few days ago, so I was really pleased to see that. Um, anyway, uh, moving on from the second biggest piece of news uh, of the week, the biggest piece of news I think that everyone was affected by was the Twitch leak that, uh, that happened just a few days ago. Um, so I added this story last minute, so I don't know if you guys have had a chance to read what I wrote, but basically what happened was an anonymous hacker took to 4chan and uploaded a link to a torrent uh, that was 125 gigabytes in size. Um, and supposedly it contains not only the, the source code for the entire Twitch website, um, but also information regarding the incomes of some of the most popular content creators on the, on the website. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details of, um, of how much money everybody earns. I will quickly just say that Critical Role, I think it was, um, were the highest paid um, Twitch streamers of the last three years, or two years, sorry, it went back to 2019. Um, and there were various other um, Twitch streamers that earned something in the region of $1 million over the last two years, which is absolute madness. Uh, if you want to go look it up, go look it up yourself. I don't really care too much, to be honest. They provide a service, they're entertainers, and how much they get paid is, is null and void. It doesn't mean anything. It's all about you know them being good people and creating good content for us to enjoy. Um, but off the back of that, um, there was obviously um, fear of people having their personal details. If you're a Twitch affiliate or Twitch partner, 
and there was the fear that your uh, your bank details were going to be accessed if you have your bank details uh, on your Twitch account for your for you uh, subscribing to other people, other channels, and and that kind of thing. Then there was a fear that that was obviously um, affected too. But Twitch have since come out and said that no, 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 none of the none of the personal or financial details of anybody that uses Twitch was uh, were um was was found. So um, you don't have to worry. But people are still having to. Just on to be on the safe side, to change their passwords, you know, adds two-step verification if they don't already have it on their accounts. But it's kind of, I don't know, it's the, my my general take on it, or my feeling from everybody is that it's it's kind of Twitch itself hasn't been hurt by this, but people are just now probably more aware of their online presence and how much how many details they put into a website, for example. So, I mean, do, what do you guys feel? Do you guys think that Twitch has taken a hit with this or do you think they've, they've, they've sort of um, handled it well? Basically? I think it was good that they quickly acknowledged it because like mm -hmm. it, there's nothing worse than those kind of situations, especially when it comes to like personal data when there's like radio silence on it, right? Like what's yeah. the extent of it? Who's been affected? Uh, and I agree with you on, on the, I, I, it's irrelevant how much people make. I mean, if they provide you know entertainment and joy into people's lives then you know they've earned yeah. it you know that that's that's amazing um i wasn't aware though that you mentioned that um personal bank details haven't been leaked apparently um which yeah. is great yeah. because um I, I saw a thing recently there's a lot of like this trend of like go, uh basically putting bots into people's channels and giving them abuse oh yeah the, and the, I imagine, the rates. Yeah. yeah 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 that's it yeah i imagine like if those those bank details had leaked of, of Twitch streamers, that that could have led to a lot of worse. Like people could have had their accounts cleaned out if it was a Twitch. If, they, if someone really wanted to hurt a Twitch streamer, that's how they could do it, and that would have been that would have just been such a bigger deal. So I'm kind of glad for Twitch, I suppose, in a weird way that that didn't happen. <laughs> that, that, but glad that for the people that use Twitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, we'd have had a knock-on effect on those people, right? So. Um, it's weird that it takes something like this for people to go like, oh yeah, I should do two factor. Wake up and, yeah. 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 So silver. I'm I'm a glass uh, half full kind of guy. So <laughs> if it gets people more mindful of security, then cool. But it shouldn't take something like that for that to happen. <laughs> you know. Um, Supposedly the uh, the hacker came out and said that the reason that they put the information on 4chan was not to um, target anyone specifically, but to merely open the door and say this is this is what this is what Twitch is this is um, this is how Twitch works and because Twitch has sort of got a, a, a stranglehold on the streaming service as much as as, as they do um, nobody sort of is high up in them in terms of that sort of um, environment and uh, and YouTube have been trying to crack it for ages so the, the the reason the hacker did it was just to show everybody this is how Twitch works and this is how um, how they're doing what they do. Um, it wasn't. There was no malintent um, intended with it, basically, to anybody in, uh, anybody specifically. Uh, Sam, what are your thoughts on the? Uh... I wouldn't have known about it if people on social media hadn't talked about it. I haven't seen mm -hmm. Twitch's uh, announcement about it. It hasn't been something that's popped up on my account or in my emails. Although I might just not have seen the email. Um, I didn't even know that people's annual earnings had been released. I just had a lot of people saying. Twitch has suffered a similar attack to what Facebook has suffered. You now need to reset your password. And so I did. Yeah. Which actually, weirdly enough, I've done it for Twitch, but not for my other social media that actually went down. <laughs> so um, that's another thing to all together. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's uh, yeah, I'm, I am one of those people who kind of doesn't think about any of this stuff as much as I possibly should, because I feel like all of us have all of our privacy stolen every day, all the time. And yeah. as soon as you do anything on the internet, that's gone. Um, I, it, it feels like a, it's an impossibility. That being said, there have been so many times throughout history where the situation of not doing something just because it won't solve the problem doesn't mean you should not do that because it takes little pieces to make up a whole puzzle. So you should still do two-factor authentication even if you think it's possibly too late because you never know. You never know. You never know. And it could you not doing it could have a, a knock on effect to somebody else as well. To be honest, so. um, for us anyway, as as a, as a business, you know. Um, yeah. So everyone, go go go. Add two step verification to everything you can, please. Um, 
it's a bit of a pain in the butt. I have, I've, I've always had two-step verification on every login that I've, uh, I've got for every platform. Um, to the point where I, <laughs> I changed mobile phone and I got a new contract with a new number a few years ago, and uh, that was a that was a headache uh, and a half because I couldn't get logged into anything anymore. But it's, it was it was a headache that was worth it just to have that security and know that I wasn't going to be um, taken, like you know, my bank details were going to be taken or something like that. And um, touch wood, it doesn't happen. Anyway, um, yeah. Go, uh, the, the, I just actually asked something you said there, Sam. The um, earnings or the information for the highest paid streamers on Twitch was actually taken from the 4chan torrent and it was uh, one person released it all on Twitter. They actually tweeted out tables and tables and tables of all the earnings for hundreds of uh, streamers, which is absolutely mental. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean anything. We move on, we all put on two-step verification, we keep everything safe. Okay. Yep. Cool. That's the lesson to be learned. Agreed. That, Agreed. That is, I don't Good. want to yeah. do blood packs. Is that what <laughs> Yeah. Doing? Let's do it. Uh, anyway. Uh, on to the final piece. Um, this uh, is a news piece that just dropped um, a couple hours uh, ago. And um, it's the, uh, the reveal of the new Resident Evil film. Uh, the trailer for Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City uh, dropped in our laps literally um, at about five o'clock this afternoon, UK time, and uh, I've not watched it yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the screen for you guys just now. Um, I think Dave, you've seen it already. You uh, you, you said yep. that at the top of the show. You have seen it. Um, Sam, enjoy. I don't know if this will have any relevance to you. But we'll see. Should I just react as though I know what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was that one of those spore creatures? What? It's a liquor. I recognized yeah. the uh the, the young lady. Although it might I might be getting her confused with a different actress. Dave, you you've the you're the one that's seen this already, so give us your general thoughts. Um it, it it's a mashup of Resident Evil One and Two. It's Chris yeah. Chris Redfield, Leon Kennedy, Claire uh Claire Redfield, Joe Jill Valentine, Valentine yeah. cutting about Raccoon City. I think there's a bit in the police station from what I can tell, and there's the mansion as well. So it's kind of like a mashup of both. Um, and it looks like, I mean, some of the cast that like the guy who's playing Leon looks more like um, I forget the guy's name from Three, um, this, the Umbrella guy. He looks more like uh, him yeah. than yeah. Leon, but uh, Carlos. Um, but that's fine. Um, like you've got the car park <laughs> in the police station. That's there. That's cool. A lot of familiar enemies, and it looks like compared to compared to the Mila Jovovich ones, where it's like so much CGI. This at least looks like practical sets, like. Some makeup, yeah. Like, the zombie makeup as well looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's um, the, the trailer has a really cheesy vibe. You can't really tell without hearing <laughs> it all, but it's um, it feels like I don't know. It feels like that sweet spot in like the, the late nineteen nineties, uh, early two thousands, like cheesy video game kind of movie, but actually done kind of knowingly. Like they kind of know that it's a, a daft franchise, and they're just having a bit of fun with it. Um, the first couple of games are quite campy. If you do play them, you and you watch the CG stuff in the games. I mean, it is very, very cheesy. Um, but that was that was part of the allure. That was part of the fun um, back then. It was like a bad action game, um, <laughs> especially the helicopter scene in the first in the first game. Uh, absolutely adored that so far. So, so oh, yeah, I do. I do <laughs> recognize the lady. Uh, the the woman playing Claire Redfield is uh, Kaya Skull Delario. Who yes. is best known in the UK as being Effie from Skins? Oh god, yes. yeah, which has been yes, all yes. over my like TikTok recently, and I'm like, oh, that's where your face is. But the um the guy playing Leon Kennedy is Avan Yogia, who was yeah. one of the the main cast members in the Nickelodeon show Victorious, which was which was I was like, I recognise you as well, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> the two main people are, and then Chris Redfield is. Robbie Amell, which I can only assume is Stephen Amell's brother. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it looks it looks good. Now that I've seen uh, the trailer in full, I, uh, I, I yeah, I, I like the look of it, and it looks good. Um, I uh, I've been staying away from it. Um, I didn't want to see anything about it. I was like, right, okay, we'll just we'll let it come out first, and then I will I will let the the, the critics um, and some of the fans jump on first and see uh, see what they say before I before I do anything. But um, but yeah, I uh, I quite like the look of it. 
Um, it sticks to, as Dave said at the start, um, the first two games, it's kind of a mashup of the first two ones. It has nothing to do with anything um, from the Mila Jovovich, uh, Paul W.S. Anderson films, um, which are now nearly 20 years old. What the hell? That I didn't even realize Resident Evil 1 was 2002. Wow. 2002, that's madness, madness. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of, in my head, I was like, do we really need another Resi film? Do we need a reboot? Is it too soon? And I'm like, okay, the first one was two, 20 years ago. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay. Um, but it does release this year, November 24th. So uh, it's literally um, less than less than two months away. Um, that, that is what I find most surprising about this trailer is that like we hadn't heard that much about it before, I don't exactly, think. Exactly. Unless I missed it, but... It's almost like a, an Apple thing, like, hey, here's the new iPhone. It's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> here's this trailer. It's uh, coming out in a month. <laughs> fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be, that'll be, that'll be good. I'll definitely on my radar. I'll check it out. It says it's I'll releasing in the theaters as well. So. I'll say this yes, much. Sir. Here at Arcade Glasgow, we love movies, don't we, Andrew? Yes, we do, Sam. What? Why, why are you asking me that? Andrew, you need to get better at this part of the <laughs> Just go into it. The reason I'm saying that is because we've got our first game of the day and it's blockbusted. Hit it! Oh, I wasn't ready. Okay, cool. Let's do this now. Thanks. Damn it. I, was, I thought you were going to do... Right, no. The reason I was going to ask about it was because I was thought you were uh, talking about our film club, which is tonight in our Discord. Ah, you sorry. Going. Too Thanks, many things. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, go and, um, go and join the Arcade Discord. Uh, go and join, join the film club too. and go and watch Get Out with all the gang. <laughs> That's it. So um, we're starting off our spooky season of films uh, through the month of October uh, in our Discord film club, and it is Get Out, um, the Jordan Peele film, uh, which I haven't seen, and I'm not going to get to see because I'm going to be on a train home while the film club is on, so I'm going to have to watch it later on. That's fine. It's fine. You'll be free on Saturday night for the most important showing of the week. There we go. There we go. Anyway, uh, yeah, Sam, it's time to, to bring back this game. Let's go with this. It's, uh, it's about the... It's, uh, it's time for some blockbusters, ladies and gentlemen. Why? I know it sounds like. <laughs> Why is the CK and the ST? I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I've just made them random colours, don't ask. I made that one in about five minutes this afternoon. That was I uh, the last minute edition. I, I, I literally did. Literally did. That stock footage of three people in a cinema with the THX um, noise over the top. That's all, that's all I could think of. Anyway, this is blockbusters, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't get to change my caption. Uh, a, a game where I give the guys, or one of us gives the guy, gives the rest of the team uh, a film poster um, for, as Sam would say, an A rated, B rated, or even a Z rated film. No, not rated. Yeah, rated. Um, and listed. You guys have listed. To, listed. Thank you. That's the word. Uh, and you guys have to guess what the film is about based purely on the poster. So uh, I have pulled uh, from my memory of terrible DVDs that I used to own back in the early 2000s. Uh, and uh, today I've got for you All the Queen's Men, which is a 2001 film starring Matt LeBlanc from Friends, Eddie Izzard, Edward Fox, and Udo. <laughs> oh, so, God. What, what do you guys think to? this film's about? <laughs> I love the, the art direction that this has taken. Oh, right. So we want it to be in, in four sections. Oh, you mean you want a quarter of the screen? No, no, no. I want it to be in four sections. Horizontal. Right, so yeah. you want it to be like in quadrant. No, four sections. <laughs> actually five, but one of the five sections is just going to be a barrier between two of the sections so that they know that the floating heads aren't part of the war scene. We're also going to make the war scene out of three different scenes. There's going to be a different war scene above it. I think it's about war, Andrew. That's my first guess. Okay, so it's about war, right? That's the good yeah. start, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Usually for, for Dave's benefit, it's quite literally just let's make fun of this poster uh, and then use whatever contextual clues it gives us to guess the plot of the film. And then Andrew will, will tell us how, how wrong we are. I mean, yeah. it's a great cut. I mean, clearly they were photographed together for that. that oh, I've... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why there's not... such a big shadow from Matt LeBlanc's <laughs> face onto. It's not it's not stills taken from the film at all. I don't know. What oh, no, no. About. We wouldn't accuse no, him no, of no, that. No. <laughs> is this actually a poster, Andrew, or is this like, is this uh, this was, this was is this a, is this the thing that you spent two minutes making earlier? 
Uh, no, 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 no. This is an official poster. Also, um, welcome to our 62 new viewers, 62, 69 new viewers. 69. Nice. Brought Hello, in from uh, We Claire and the We Claire. Hello, Claire. our We Claire mama. Um, <laughs> thank you for the raid, guys. Uh, we are in the middle of our Super Arcade talk show. Um, thank you for, uh, very much for joining us. Hello, everybody. Um, we are joined. I'll, I'll do a quick introductions. It's me, it's Andrew. Hi, I'm here in the studio, uh, joined by Sam in his mini little studio here. <laughs> Um, and we're joined this week by our special guest, the lovely Dave Cook. Hello, Dave. Oh. Give him a wave. There you go. Uh, hello. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Dave um, doesn't want to take away from the All the Queen's Men poster. <laughs> we're I mean, currently it's, it's playing. It's clearly the start of the show. It, it really is. Matt LeBlanc is really overpowering everything that I do right now. So. Um, like he's regretting his life choices. Like, why am I in this? Claire, I think he's, Thank the director's that. told him, we want you to bite your lower lip seductively. And he's gone, oh, you want me to remove my lower lip? I see. And so he's curling it in as far as he can. <laughs> he's eating a sir so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Way more sir <laughs> representation in, in films, I think, generally. Does um, does anyone else notice that, I feel like they've added this digitally, but Matt LeBlanc has a little sort of like chin crevice that shouldn't yeah. it doesn't feel like it should be there it's butt chin. I don't know if it's actually, yeah. yeah a little butt chin i don't think that's supposed to be there and i think they've added it in post post uh in, in post sorry i i forget <laughs> can we can we swear on this show what do we do here uh only if it's absolutely necessary uh it's not never mind <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> I'll, I'll just say it was a description of the the look that eddie izzard is giving the gentleman to his right mm, mm, <laughs> yeah um, for those of you who've just joined in with the raids, those of you in the chat, um, we basically are playing a game called Blockbusted, where one of us puts a poster of a film and the other guys have to guess, including you guys, you guys in chat can guess too, what the plot of the film is. If you have seen the film, please do not spoil it in the chat. Thank you. Okay, I have, I think... I have a legitimate guess, all joking aside. Well, you have a guess okay. for your go guess, on, Dave. absolutely. Go Let's go. I think it's like, it says, all can. the Queen's men, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a... The men plural. There's a crew who have to go into some war-torn place to right. extract. I'm presuming Eddie Izzard's character to safety because <laughs> okay. they know something. Like they're undercover in war-torn Germany or something, or a Paris <laughs> resistance or something. That's yeah. my guess. Okay. 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 Close. My, Close. My You've got a few of the, the plot points. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sam. You shouldn't have said that because now I want to change my guess. No, I'll, uh, no, I'll stick to my no, guess. Go for it. Uh, the Queen's men are her private bodyguards, kind of like the... the um, oh, uh, like Liz. Kind of like the, so kind of like the CIA, kind of like the CIA okay. for, for the okay. president. They are the private security for, the, for Queen. Uh, and in this scenario, the Queen has found herself in the middle of a war zone and it is following the group that protects her as they try to get her out. Eddie Izzard is not the Queen. Uh, but Eddie Izzard is a character <laughs> who lets them like seek refuge in Ezzy, Eddie Izzard's attic. Okay. okay, okay. This is my theory. Um, actually, you also touched on a plot point or two as oh. well. Well done, Sam. Well done, well done. Okay. Is, it the word, um, is it the word attic? Was it literally uh, the It actually was. Um, so this is, um, this is All the Queen's Men from 2001. Um, it's, uh, I'll, I'll read the, the, the IMDb blurb first and then I'll no, go No, no, no. The way we usually no. do this, you should play oh, the trailer Oh, do you want to see first. the trailer? Because okay, we'll see the, trailer the, the extra game for you and I, Dave, is to try and work out if the trailer <laughs> does give us any other contextual clues. You'd be shocked the number of times we make a guess, watch the trailer and still go, I have no idea. There's, <laughs> we have no idea what's right. We, the, one of the earliest ones we did for this was about a man who died while working at a seaside fun fair. Uh, and he's now like haunting the fair and can't go to the other side until oh. someone brings his wife. Yeah, but, like, that was the one with was... um... <laughs> the trailer oh, didn't explain name? any of yeah. that. It just yeah. showed him getting crushed by a Ferris wheel and then him just yeah. kind of wandering around. We we're like, I have no idea. Yeah, that, that, was, could be anything. that was John. That was John White. That was John White, uh, Angelina Jolie's dad, uh, who starred in that film. That was it. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Wow. Okay, uh, this is the trailer for All the Queen's Men. Um, see if this helps at all. Yeah. <laughs> It's a really good film, by the way. I, I, I urge everyone to at least watch it once. I don't believe you. <laughs> Just realized with this nope, software, we won't get audio. Me. We're not going to get audio, which is fine. No. Um, oh, Matt LeBlanc. Sorry. Really young Matt Where's LeBlanc. Where's his bum chin well. gone? No, he's going to have it. Definitely added in post. <laughs> uh, or, oh, that was Eddie Izzard. Oh, it's oh. the episode of The Simpsons when Grandpa Simpson hid out in 
<laughs> in Nazi Germany, dressed in drag. I have heard about this. Yes. So they're sending in. <laughs> so, oh right. So it's it's soldiers that have been sent into Nazi Germany, as you're saying, Dave, undercover as as a performing group of women on stage. So, uh, yeah, the plot of the story is this. A mismatched team of British Special Service agents led by an American must infiltrate in disguise a female-run Enigma factory in Berlin and bring back the decoding device that will end the war. So it's set in World War II. They were trying to get the Enigma um, machine, which is what the Germans used to, to code all of their messages so that uh, other forces wouldn't know what they were saying. Um, so they send in Matt LeBlanc with um, a group of um, British forces led by Eddie Azard, who helps them dress up in drag uh, and infiltrate the Enigma machine as workers, uh, female you, workers, sorry. Can you give us the, the lowdown, Andy, on Google and IMDb ratings for this film, please? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The IMDb rating is 4.9 out of 10. Fair, uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got the Google one, give me a sec. Uh, the Google rating is, oh, sorry, I can't see because it's off to the side. Sorry, 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, that's, Rotten Tomatoes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, all joking this... aside, like, I, that, that's the kind of film that probably would benefit from a modern remake now, especially oh, yeah. like, his drag race nice. and stuff, right? It's, it's more accepted yeah. and, and popular and... Exactly. People well, could think, rewatch it, rewrite it, and it'll, it'll hopefully yeah, be higher yeah. than that. I would say, yeah. though, it feels like, yes, uh, like drag queens are, are more accepted as a general part of, of society, but I feel like most of the comedy in this movie is going to be centered around the idea of, oh, it's men in dresses, how weird and wacky. So I don't know how well it would translate to 2021, but we can do a little bit of fantasy casting. Uh, who would you put in the bewildered American role of Matt LeBlanc, and who would you put in the um, the the camp British soldier leading the charge role of Eddie Izzard? The trans, trans um, cross dressing sorry. My my immediate thought is Benedict Cumberbatch, but it's possible just because you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned the Enigma machine. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, and obviously, um, that's what he's done. Yeah. I, I um, would say this is a completely bonkers suggestion, but he uh, he was in a, a movie where he played a, dra a drag queen, I think. Um, John uh, Leguizamo played Luigi in the Mario Brothers movie. Yes. I don't know the name of the movie, but um. Uh, it's Too Wong Fu. Too Wong Fu. Yeah, like yeah, I, he bring him. I, I I love seeing him on screen. He's he should be in more movies. He's kind of disappeared. Yeah. Since, since How Mario. old is he? Uh, oh, John Leguizamo is, is, and he's nearly fifty now. I think like fifty something possibly. He's uh, also the voice of Sid from Ice Age. Uh, if that helps anybody. I mean, it definitely uh, yeah. helped me better. Yeah, he's fifty seven. I feel maybe. like yeah. I feel like he wouldn't be sent undercover. <laughs> um, uh, Tu Wong Fu, thanks, thanks. Thanks, Julian. Julian Newmar, I think, is the full title of the film, if I remember rightly. Um, it was Patrick Swayze, uh, John Leguizamo, and Wesley Snipes. Our them, own Mishmal um, has yeah. pitched John Cena as the bewildered American. And I, do feel like, I do feel like this is a movie he would do. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Um, I would actually say for uh, the Eddie Lizard character, I would throw in uh, David Tennant. Um, a little, little yeah. toss back to his, one of his early acting jobs, um, mm -hmm. where he, uh, where he dressed as a, he cross dressed as a barmaid, actually. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. You can let us yeah. know on our Twitter or Instagram at Arcade Glasgow what you think the best options are for the remake of All the Queen's Men. There you go. Beautiful. All right. Um, so that's All the Queen's Men. Go watch it. And uh, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Let's uh, let's do this. Uh, if I can buy the button, it's that one. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Arcade Product of the Week. This is the part of the show where we take a little time to advertise how awesome we are and uh, some of the awesome stuff that we have on our online store. Um, because it's our show and we can do what we want. So uh, this week, our featured products are two games, actually. I went with two games this week. Um, and they are Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2, which are both on our website for 11 99 for the Xbox 360. There you go. There you go. Uh, the reason I picked them is because Back for Blood, the uh, the new game, not from 
not from Val, but from some of the guys that made Left 4 Dead, is due out on the 12th of October. So we're literally less than a week away from that, which like is basically a spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. Um, so yeah, the, uh, these are both on our website for 11.99 if anybody is, uh, is, a, is fancy. There you go, there's Left 4 Dead 2. The Left 4 Dead 2 um, is B grade, whereas the uh, Left 4 Dead 1, if I can tab back, there you go, is A grade. So there you go, condition. I can do this, oh yeah. Mm. Um, but what I wanted to ask you guys was, uh, are you looking forward to Back for Blood? Have you played or seen anything to do with the game yet? Um, I'm assuming a no from Sam, but I'm going to move to Dave first. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been purposely avoiding it because I'm excited Ooh. for it. Uh, one of those Ooh. games where I'm kind of like, I just want to, because it's Games Pass Day 1, so I'm going to try it there. Yes. Um, yes. And if I like it, I, I like to give people money for if I like something, you know, so uh, all my friends are on PlayStation 5 and 4, so I'll probably buy it to play with them. Um, but I'll try before I buy on, on Game Pass. But yeah, it's just yeah. nice to see that team coming back. And because uh, it seems like, I mean, Valve, uh, Valve uh, weren't going to do anything with it, right? They, no, they, they definitely they, weren't. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's just it's nice one to of see the long running there. jokes. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just nice <sighs> to see them get their kind of, well, not, not their franchise back, but it's it's a new Left 4 Dead, essentially, right? It's, you know. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, well, but, you know, you for it. I've also, just like you, actually been avoiding, not purposely avoiding, but not sort of going out and looking specifically for anything to do with it. I've kind of just left it on the back there. I know a lot of streamers that we uh, that we interact with on Twitch, they've, uh, they've been in the beta. Dando is the one that first, first one that pops into my head um, that has played um, quite a bit of Back of Blood, actually, because I know Dando's a big Left 4 Dead fan as well. Um, but I've, I've, not, I've not really coined onto any of it. Um, Purely so I can have like a fresh perspective when I do uh, get to play it um, on Xbox again day day one on Xbox Game Pass just like yourself, Dave. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Um, so if anybody um, fancies it, then uh, then give me a shout. Add me on Xbox Arcade Glasgow. It's just uh, six five six, I think. I've just advertised myself on yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> Sam, Dave, do you want to tell people your gamer tag? <laughs> <laughs> Not in public, no, was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Sam, have you seen anybody playing this? You, yeah, what? You had any Who? What? What? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can safely move on, Andrew. Uh, no, I know your 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 zombie Xbox 360 preference is Dead Rising. Uh, no, Dead Rising. Yeah, Dead Rising. Um, sure. That's your that's the one you love and adore. Yep. So, yep. Duct tape we'll, we'll and chainsaws. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got more important things to talk about, Andrew. Like our guest, Dave. Cook. We do. Let's 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 do that. Let's uh, let's move quickly on um, and uh, go go buy Left 4 Dead on our website. Thank you, Bob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, so I cut you off there, Sam. I didn't mean that. I forgot that it's ten percent off of all Xbox hardware on our website as well. So if you fancy it, go go check out the website by the link that Michelle's probably put in the chat. I haven't looked yet, so thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's time to to, to 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 take the spotlight and shine it directly in the face of the person that we invited on this week. So quite literally, uh, <laughs> move our Dave, faces. I'm, I'm going to make you big. Uh, you're going to you're going to be big in the screen like this. No, that's me. Dang it. Yep. Why, why are you doing this to me? Why? There we go. There's Dave. Uh, introducing everyone, uh, the man behind Kiltopia, Vessels, uh, Beatdowns per Minute, and, uh, and Go Street, which is due out uh, February, January next year? January next January year. January 2022. Yep. Yeah, thank yep. you. Uh, it is the lovely Dave Cook. Hello, Dave. How are you? Hey, yeah, good. Having a blast with you guys. This, is, uh, this has been fun. Digging it. Nice. <laughs> nice. Is it nice. more fun to do interviews where 95% of the chat isn't about you? <laughs> yeah, actually, to be honest, yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm quite, a, quite an anxious person sometimes. I hide it quite well, but sometimes I'm like, Let, let's take it off of me for a bit. And talk about I, I think that, that might come across <laughs> facetiously for me as well. But the other side to this is that I hear so many people who do get interviewed regularly that you, there's quite a lot of repetition to what you get asked. And the oh, prospect yeah, yeah. of getting to do, for some people, it's like, I don't want to do anything wacky. I cannot be bothered. For other people, it's like, sure, I'll guess the plot of a movie I've never seen, like, just little bits and pieces to sort of set the tone slightly better. So hopefully we've uh, we've put you in a good mood for us to then ask you the same questions. No, they'll be slightly different than most people, <laughs> hopefully. 
I mean, there's there's so much to get through with you, Dave. You're you're a very busy man. You uh you, you just never stop. I mean, every single time I talk to you, you've got you're spinning so many plates. Um, I uh, I just can't believe it. Um, it's incredible. So, uh, I'm going to start with the obvious. Um, you uh you you've mentioned before in the show that or earlier in the show that you're uh, you used to be a, a video game journalist. Uh, but you moved to freelance uh, not that long ago, wasn't it? Just uh, was the last the last year, the year before, I think it was. Um, so was. Yeah, yeah, it was a few, a few, oh, a few years ago. I went contract. I became a contractor, which is kind of different that's from right. a freelancer. But now I'm sort of yeah, trying to move across to like fully freelance, and that's been a bit, you know. So I've dropped most of my days at work now. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, how is uh, it? How is, how is that treating you? I, I'm I'm just lucky that. Um, like a, a lot of this freelance stuff and contracting, right? It's about building up contacts. And it's the same for like, even, you know, we'll get into the comics later, but a lot of that is contact building, you know, raising yeah. awareness of yourself and putting yourself out there. And um, eventually if you do that long enough and it does take a long time, like the work comes to you, people are like, Hey, I need some writing done. Oh, I know that Dave's good for it. And we've, we've worked with him before and he gets the job done. So let's hire him again. So it's kind of like that reputation thing is, is massively important. But it, it takes a long time to do it, yeah. And it's only, I mean, I've been doing it, writing in a freelance capacity, even on top of my job. Uh, best part of like, God, it must have been 2007 was when I started doing this. Um, and it really does take that long to sort of really, it took me that long to think, right, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to drop a few <laughs> days at work and, and really start. Because um, you still need that cushion of money coming in that's guaranteed, right? You so, do, to pay the bills, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and... So yeah, only recently I was like, I'm going to do it, and thankfully it's working out. So yeah. What was okay. the if you started in 2007? What was the first big story that you remember covering or writing a piece for, or any sort of the first thought that comes to your mind about your earliest part of your career? Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, I lost my job in the financial crash of 2008, the big one, right? Um, my first paid job out of uni. I was a journalism student. You mentioned journalism. Uh, studies as well. So I, you go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's my background. Too. I wasn't, so, I wasn't doing it on purpose because I do get the feeling <laughs> that, like, because our our guest last week, uh, the Jazz Show, had also done a, a degree in journalism. So I feel <laughs> yeah. like I've now been brought on two weeks in a row, and it's not the reason that, I, like, I'm not intending to bring it up. It's just literally what's going on in my life right now. But it now appears as though I'm going. Yeah, so if you could give me some tips. <laughs> it's, as if, it's as if Andrew picked the guests like on purpose or something like that. It's kind of weird. No, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but it's um... it's weird, right? Because um, like I so I lost I lost my full time job, but but uh, around about so that was two thousand eight. But the year before that, I started doing small bits of freelance, but in the true sense of the word, like I wasn't getting paid for it. It was like not for exposure but it was just for like i want just some experience of like getting pieces published and stuff like that so yeah. um but you asked like my first big piece that came in 2008 so i lost my job and i'm like i need to pay my bills because i i don't have any money <laughs> so i was like i'm just gonna do freelance and I, I totally jumped in it was terrifying like it's definitely something you, you choose to do rather than be pushed because it's being pushed into it, it's like a trial by fire but um yeah. Off of the back of that, I pit, hustled around, pitched around. Uh, my first paid writing gig was with the Scotsman newspaper. Um, I did their games column for about eight years, I think, on a set, on a Saturday inside the magazine that you got with it. So I did like a game review a week. Um, but off the back of that, um, I pitched to uh, uh, Games TM, um, and they were like, "Hey, you, you, you're in Scotland, right? So there's a big event happening happening up in Dundee that we're obviously not going to send our writers from Bournemouth." Because that's the other end of the country. Yeah. Um, how would you feel about uh, going hands-on with the game called APB? It's apparently a Grand Theft Auto um, killer. I remember um, APB, yeah. That was my first press trip, uh, getting into a coach with lots of other journalists and going up to Dundee and spending a day at Real Time Worlds and re uh, playing APB. Then afterwards on the coach home, everyone going, "What even is this game?" Because <laughs> um, the game, the game was too ambitious for its own good. It was like um, it had a lot of great ideas, but it was like. Hey, you can customize your character like a crazy degree. Okay, but what's the game like? Oh, it's not that fun. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a shame, um, but yeah, that was my first like big printed feature in Games TM. Uh, down at Imagine Imagine Publishing, who are now Feature right, nice. Publishing down in Bournemouth. That's, That's where right, I yeah. moved to when I moved to England. I got a job in house with them eventually, and that kind of got me on the path writing for Games TM, Retro Gamer, Now Gamer. Um, that kind of got me kind of into the industry, I guess. I guess. So it's funny but how things work out. <laughs> 
with the Scotsman probably did you quite well, given you've supposedly, you can tell me if this is right or not, but won three awards for your time there. Yeah, 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 it was... So uh, that's, you know, yeah, incredible, yeah, it was an incredible awesome. first year, third year and fourth year of doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it was a newspaper columnist in the UK, so the best like newspaper columnist is mad. Um, I remember going down uh, to the first award show that I got nominated for, I didn't win it, but I was just so happy to be there. I'm like, you're, you're this journalist, <laughs> you're that journalist. I've read, I've read your, your, your columns for years and your articles. I was like starstruck, handing out business wow. cards. But that, that kind of goes back to what I was saying, like for feeling, just put yourself out there. Don't don't worry about being annoying. Like, well, okay, don't don't be annoying. Like, don't pester. People. <laughs> don't don't be too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you still need to be on their radars. You need to make yourself yeah, known absolutely. to them, and that in itself is an art that you you grow over time. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I I would honestly say to anyone sort of watching this, like, I am I geek out over this stuff, like the the why behind it and the methods behind it. So if you get me on Twitter, I will happily talk your ear off about. How to get into the uh, journalism and games writing and yeah i'm happy to do that so i love it no i, I i've uh, i've seen you like everyone like whenever i've seen anybody looking for advice from you you're so open and so willing to to just help anybody that's uh, that's looking for that man so it's amazing so um so thank yeah. you <laughs> i figured um, that that level of you know a achievement within writing for games journalism is a big driving force behind the following you then received as a writer in games journalism. You know, there's clearly a quality there. You've talked in previous interviews that the first Kickstarter you did with regards to Cultopia, quite a lot of the initial backing came from people who had followed your journalism itself, which I think is a, a real testament to the quality that, of the work you're putting out before. Kiltopia is now reaching the release of the fourth edition. Yep. Do you think that producing Kickstarters for this series over time has gotten easier? Um, yes, definitely, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, that's not to say, like, it, it's never easy. Mm, you know, it's yeah. still, you know, it's a lot of hard work, but I think you start to get a feel for, like, you know what potential things could go wrong before they go wrong, so you prepare for them better. It's the experience, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. But on the other hand, like, Kickstarter itself is always evolving, right? And you've got things like um, the big one, right, Brexit. Um, has really impacted things like shipping rates. So like shipping costs have gone yeah. up. And last year for Cultopia 3 was the first year that me and loads of other comic writers had to start doing customs forms to, to Europe and, and to other yeah. parts of the country because we lost that as part of Brexit. We, did, we didn't have to do that before Brexit. Now we had to learn how to do these forms and a lot of us, got, myself included, got the forms wrong. So loads of my comics went to like other countries and then a month later I, they came back to me on my doorstep like oh um, and i was like wow. can you tell me what i did wrong and they're like yeah we don't know no one knows that's wow. the thing it's like brexit in a nutshell nobody knows it's like uh. so but through speaking with other comic creators and speaking with like your local post office and again it goes back to putting yourself out there like speak to people people can people help each other out you know they they like to help other people who are like in the same situation and through speaking with other comic creators, we figured out how to do this form properly. And so next time, as I say, you know, the next book, the next Kickstarter will become a bit easier because of that, you know, that experience. Yeah. So. And there will, there will definitely be a next Kickstarter for Cultopia, given, again, you've mentioned multiple times it's a five-part series as of now. So right. keep yeah. on lookout for that specifically. Uh, but Andrew, that's not the only thing that Kiltopia is anymore, is it? No, oh, I, I wanted to quickly just ask actually, um, I assume you've been writing Kiltopia 5, I think, uh, is that, has that been, is that something you've been working on right already or are you, uh, you still focused still on just four at the moment and getting that out there? Oh no, yeah, so I, f I finished five, uh, last year, finally. Um, so I was always a bit, a bit, a bit ahead, you know, um, just to give myself that sort of time. It doesn't mean to say that right up to the last minute on four, I was changing things. No, I was going to say, you're like, maybe that, mm, that's not good. I think I'm going to add, ooh, that's a good, yeah, I'm going to, yeah. So I'm oh, saying, oh, uh, dude, uh, like, like yeah, my <laughs> scripts, you know, like go th up to like, I think the script for two was the hardest one. It went up to something like version 26 or something on the document. Wow. I, wow. I changed so much and I'm, <laughs> I'm such a perfectionist. Like I obsess, <laughs> even on the first draft, I'm like, everything has to be perfect in the first draft, which it doesn't. It's, I, I no longer do that. But for the second one, it was like, this is the follow up to the first one. The first one was such a big success. The, the height, this needs yeah, to be, huge. yeah, yeah. Like this can't be a fluke. It needs to be great. Um, so yeah, on yeah, top of that, that yep. so, something I'm really curious about since Kiltopia as a series is, is quite tied in to 
like modern converse, like really up to date modern conversations about things going on in the world. If I was in that position, I feel like I'd be making changes to what was coming up all the time. I mean, you've talked about um, the idea of cancel culture and the NHS situation have yeah, major NHS. influences on earlier versions of Kiltopia. I feel like you you finished number five a year ago. Are you not tempted at times to sort of be like, well, this is a thing that's now in the news and it's part of the conversation today. And I feel like I want to make some sort of point about it in this next book. Do you want to add new bits in based on what's happened since you finished? So I think uh, pr probably not, I mean, maybe like I've changed like a few lines of dialogue just because um, there was one character, for example, who I might use again in a future thing. I'm, that, that's not a teaser. I'm not actually sure if I will, but <laughs> I might like to do something else with this. You this heard it here first, guys. You heard it here first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then I thought they weren't really, if I'm going to do that, they need to be someone who's memorable. They didn't like, for example, have an accent or like have the, their di dialogue was kind of generic. Because oh, I didn't yeah. think they were going to be like a bigger character, but now I went back and gave them a dialect, so they're kind of British now. Um, so I, okay. I thought, okay, so little things like that. But um, on the thematic stuff, like I, the no, like I haven't gone back and changed any of that because it was more a lot of it. I, I'll tell you just now, the fifth one, a lot of the stuff in that one is uh, to do with things like the George Floyd protests right. and right. The, right. the ability of people to like start a movement for good causes. Yeah off the back of like a single event, like people, how people can really, when they want to not be complacent and just rally around each other and actually try and change things. Like, like with COVID as well was a big part of it where, you know, um, I'm sure we've, you know, we've all got our vaccines and stuff, how quickly those centers spun up. We can really do good things and react to things positively and get stuff done when we're pushed enough. And um, a lot of that is in the fifth book. So, it's more it's more broad so i don't have to keep going back and changing things you know um so protest and uh reacting to big changes in the world those are like broad themes in the book um that i think okay. hopefully people will still relate to when it comes out next year but, I mean, um, just personally when i when i read a piece usually even a graphic novel it is a snapshot of that time and it's affected by what's happening around the writer at that time so i think that's you can change so much and try to keep it as up to date as possible but keeping it keeping that that theme that you initially went into writing the book about is, is important. So I think, yeah, I think you're ready to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Sam was about to say, sorry, I, I went off on a tangent there, but, uh, but Kiltopia's been picked up. Uh, yeah, it was a good tangent. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Kiltopia's, um, you, you announced earlier, earlier this year that uh, Kiltopia's got picked up by um, Voltaku, uh, yeah. who are uh, um, a production company in the States. And uh, Kutopia is going to be made into a TV show. Um, so yeah, how, 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 how exciting is that? I, was, I like I saw the news drop on Twitter and I was like, oh, what? Are you kidding me? That's amazing! How excited are you? Oh, oh, mass I mean, like I, I am, I, I am really, I find it really hard to keep secrets like about my own work. <laughs> like if I'm working on something really cool, I'm like, tell someone. We signed that deal back in like 2019. It was just before really? Christmas. Really? Yeah, wow. yeah. Um, and the reason it took so long to announce was just the legal stuff, right? I, I, you know, it's like, oh, it's so cool getting your thing optioned, which it is, it's amazing. But then there's also this like new reality where you're like, you need to learn about the legal side of things and get a lawyer. <laughs> like, More paperwork, but, damn it. Yeah, but you know, it's like, um, like anything I see as a pause, it's a learning curve. Like we, we now know how, I now, now know how these things work. So it's like, should it happen again at some point? Fingers crossed. I'll know, but yeah, no, it's really exciting. It's like, um, it's fully animated. Um, it's being animated in Unreal Engine, which is like really cool um, because they, they're actually working with Epic. Like Epic yeah. are part funding it with a grant because um, no one has used Unreal Engine to this degree to make everything, you know, within the framework of the show. Like yeah. it's all done on like virtual sets, you know, like um, just imagine like a video game map uh, in like Assassin's Creed or something. With all the the set the scene settings and buildings and stuff, that's your set, and then they build the character models like you would in a game, and they are motion captured through the environment through the set. It's like they've showed me some stuff behind the scenes, and it just looks cool. Um, <laughs> like no, it's just, just cool. yeah, it's just cool. It's um, te te technologically, uh, sorry, technology wise, can't speak that. Yeah. Um, technology wise, it's like uh, the the mocap looks great. I've only seen it on kind of like low poly models of the characters though so it looks really creepy um <laughs> it's real time kind of like, like pro evil yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like the kind of gaping mouths and stuff. But it's <laughs> like, um, like when the actor moves in real time, the character does even down to the facial stuff, and it just looks so cool. Like it's like, wow. And the the other side of it is like they're saying like you know, doing it in Unreal means if someone ever wants to make a game about this show, all they need the to do assets is, are there. Yeah, the yeah. assets are there, right? So they can That's just insane. take them and so it's it's an interesting thing i don't think i've ever seen that done before where like the game and the show are made in the same tech like that so yeah. it, i mean this may never happen with the game and stuff right um we, we're certainly not speaking to anyone about it yet but if it does that would be cool but yeah, it's, uh, we should i mean they're working on the first footage now um i haven't seen it yet um so i think that's what the they're stuff you the stuff you dropped on Twitter, though, like the the, the captures that you threw up of, uh, of Stiletto and stuff, it's that's just I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, it's oh, mad, it looks right? So good. Looks so the, the, good. I mean, like that the footage that they're making just now, that's that's what they're going to try and use to sell it to like a Net Netflix or Amazon or whoever. So yeah. it's still not found a home yet, but um, okay. we're on the path now. So it's like, yeah, let's let's just see what happens. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. So amazing. the the official writer for the series is uh is phil galat i might be pronouncing that entirely wrong which i apologize to to phil um but <laughs> I, i'm genuinely curious and again this could be a really stupid question on my part how much are you involved with the writing is it a case of you've you've licensed out to them so they're now taking your words and producing it in a way that can be done for television or are you still being consulted about how it would sound through your own writing Oh, that's a good question. I mean, like, um, so so Phil uh, did, um, so he's done like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. He did like Love, Death and Robots season one and two. He, yeah. he didn't write all of it, but I think he was like the main uh, writing talent on it, like kind of steered it and stuff. Um, so based on that, you know, Love, Death and Robots, I think he's like a, a good fit for it. Um, but thematically, yeah, so he's writing it all. I mean, I'm, I'm not writing any of it, but thematically they're getting in touch with me and saying, hey, is this how this character would act? Like how, ah, you know, here's this like, stiletto. Can you tell us if she was a person, you know, in real life, you know, what would she be like? Her demeanor, yeah. her attitude, how would she speak? Um, but also things like the vibe of the city, because it's not just going to be, you know, it's not going to be like CGI wise. It's not just going to be like kind of realistic looking. It's going to be hyper colorful and look like the comic yeah. series, hopefully. Um, you know, you know how like we, we are a cyberpunk comic, but when you think cyberpunk, you do think a bit of neon, but also kind of gloomy and broody. This is like, yeah. I mean, you've seen Killtopia. It's like garish and like in your face, colorful and kind of psychedelic almost. Um, it is. Craig, so Craig's first play. Play. Yeah, it's amazing. His artwork's insane. So yeah, I love Craig's stuff. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. Um, so they want to try and keep keep it up, you know, the sort of vibrancy of it. Um, so yeah, they just kind of consult me on that kind of stuff, which is cool. Um, I think I get some kind of credit as well. In the, that would be mad to see my name in the, the opening credits. But... I, I think you probably should get at least some sort of credit. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean more like uh, like a creative consultant or whatever. Yeah. You know, um, brain, brain man, the man with the brain that made the thing. Um, very, very quickly, uh, just inside, Greg Patton, who Andrew's just mentioned there. there the uh, artist for the first two issues of Killtopia, you mentioned recently that he's he sort of stepped away because he's got a full-time job doing illustration and design. How did he react to this news? Was he someone that was was spilled the beans before anyone else, or did he have to find out like the rest of us schmucks through <laughs> through a press? Oh no, the, the deal's with me and Craig. Yeah, because um, oh okay, yeah, because when I mean obviously like so I'm I'm the creator of it, you know, in, initially, but. You know, Craig is very much instrumental in defining the kind of look and feel, uh, right. based on my kind of notes. But I mean, I mean, you look at Craig's art, and you, you even if you have a vague understanding of Kiltopia, you, you know it's from that series because he's just made yeah. such a, a footprint on it. You know, a, a mark on it. Um, things like designing the look and feel of like characters like Stiletto, who's so recognisable now. Um, mm. She has such a unique identity, but so much of that's down to Craig. You know, and um, so yeah, I mean quite rightly uh he was sort of involved in the, the negotiations involved. yeah <laughs> yeah he, so he's got a credit as well so i think we're both credited as like co-creators on the show um or well based on the comic created by us kind of thing um, pretty cool yeah pretty it's awesome. cool. Yeah. sorry just while you're chatting there i just grabbed a cop uh, a quick um screenshot of stiletto herself um with, uh, with the utopia logo um, that was actually i think the first piece of art we showed i think uh of utopia yeah 
I will point out we've like, not oh. we've not explained or described the plot of Kiltopia yet, and we won't because you get asked that every time you come on the show. <laughs> My advice to the viewing audience is to go and purchase a copy yourself instead. Um, I will mention that if uh, if, if you're interested in uh, video games, if you're interested in uh, Japanese cinema, anime, um, manga itself, then then and, and, and cyberpunk, as you mentioned, Dave, then Kiltopia is right up your street. Um, it's everything you would ever want. Everything that, like I've always, like, everything I've absorbed over the last twenty, thirty years, um, is put into is put into it's put into print by you guys. So um, it's amazing. Thank you so well, much. Andrew has a jacket okay. based on the. Based I, on the I do. I made a custom jacket, a custom Cuttlefish jacket um, for for Kaiju Cola specifically because I it just love awesome. you so much. <laughs> so it, it actually awesome. like sincerely blew my mind when I saw that. Like <laughs> even like. Even when people do like fan art sketches, like even like oh, what, yeah. Yeah. what other people might consider quite a basic thing, like a sketch. But to me, it's like you took the time to do that. That's that's awesome, man. You know, like yeah. So thank you for that. Thank you. No, no problem. Um, okay, you've also got another project on the run at the moment. Um, so you're working with Steve Gregson uh, on uh, BPM, which is your your latest, novel, which is a beat downs per minute. It's kind of a an ode or a love letter to. Um, Fighting games, basically, or, or brawl, you know, brawling type games. Um, how's have you been actually delivering that via Patreon, which is a different, different way of of, uh, of sort of delivering comic books than you've done before? How's that? How's that been? Yeah, do you know, like like Kickstarter, it was a, a learning curve as well. Um, mm -hmm. the, the reason we did it is because um, Steve and I, like, we we were again, we started working on BPM about two years ago now. Um, we actually got like quite far, like up to like page 20 or something with the art and then we decided to start over because Steve went, hey, let, let's go bigger and better with this and try and make it, you know, maybe do it as a Patreon or some sort of crowdfunder that helps us leave our jobs, essentially. <laughs> um, but it just so happened that, so he's a freelancer too, he's a contractor like me who also does freelance on the side and we were like, man, really sick of my job and he's like, me too. Do you want to like try a patreon just try it and see if it works and maybe that's a way we can get enough money coming in that we can leave our jobs um <laughs> you have to you have to try and become independent i suppose you know it's you yeah. gotta try it um and in the comic space is kind of weird where it's like even if you got a few comics racked up at like image or like dc or marvel the payout these days is not as much as it used to be like you still need to figure out how you're going to keep the money coming in so we figured a patreon might be the way to go so bpm yeah it's, it's a tribute to like uh streets of rage double dragon like all the retro sort of side scrolling beat em ups um but it's a 140 page graphic novel uh, which will be printed at the very end but we thought there's enough content here to like do a weekly comic build up a fan base but at some point during beat beat downs per minute and we're going to launch our second comic so every friday you'll get two pages from two different comics and then we're going to do a third so we have our next two planned out um i've started roughly writing the second one which i can tell you is a mashup of like super sentai power rangers kind of that um oh, that sounds what that's it yeah, sounds, yeah. sounds one but yeah, it's um, one <laughs> it stars an intergalactic ronin who's a bounty hunter who like takes assassins and the hit jobs across the, the stars but he's also like a henshin kamen rider type type guy so it's we thought hey let's let's tap into our love of like power rangers from when we were kids because everything our patreon does like our comic label does is it's always got to be fueled by some kind of nostalgia be that like old school toys saturday morning cartoons yeah. um and yeah you asked how it's going like it's 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 going i don't mean this in a bad way it's going slowly but it always was gonna because a lot of our followers from kickstarter have said what's a patreon yeah, like they're new yeah. to it i i don't think it's as well known to everyone as maybe kickstarter like everyone knows crowdfunding but patreon's kind of a subscription model so it's kind of different but yeah, yeah, yeah. um no we're doing good we're, we're homing in on, on i think we're up to like 60 pound a month now which is great so that covers you know like yes. a page and some colors so that's that's awesome um and i think i think as we start to show hey we're, we're gonna make good in our promise and we're gonna have new content every week people will start to go okay these guys are for real and they know what they're doing and Hopefully it'll keep on going. Oh. Yes, you, if, like if you're a viewer and you want to see how classic weekly cart, uh, weekly comic releases are going to look like in the future, I think this is a really good example of what people have been doing for decades with comic books. So I think that's amazing that this is the this is the future of where it can go. 
And you yeah. guys are the first people I've heard of to do anything like this. So incredible. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Well, I mean, it's kind of because a lot of people I know do like uh, web comics, um, and they are like smaller strips, you know, like a three panel, kind of like a Garfield kind of thing, right? Yeah, uh, classic. Penny yeah, Arcade yeah. is a good example, you know, like that kind of weekly. Um, whereas this is like a full comic page, right? So it's like as it would look in the final printed book, and you're pretty much as a subscriber, once it's printed, you're going to get it for like dirt cheap because you've subscribed to you, you're going to get like a huge discount on it. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, it's going to take a long time for us to get there if it's every week, but it's we're going to keep it fun, you know. I think for people. Nice. That's great. Um, I mean, off the back of that, obviously, I know you love. I know your love of games. Um, <laughs> but uh, but you're also um, you've also been writing um, basically like the ultimate guide to those types of games: Street, Streets of Rage, etc., and, and and Final Fight and uh, um, not Final Fight. Anyway. Um, You've, uh, you've been writing the, the ultimate guide to that, which is just coming out next year, uh, published by uh, Bitmap Books, I believe. Yes, that's yep. yeah. um, which is called Go Straight. Um, did that tie in really nicely with uh, with, with Team Beats, with, with Beats per, Beat Downs Per Minute? Um, it, it did, but a lot of people, for the longest time, people <laughs> thought they were the same project. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, like, oh, man, I can't wait for your book. I'm like, what fighting game book? I'm like, which one? BPM or Go Straight? And they're like, what are those? <laughs> Yeah, um, so I think we could have done a bit better, like saying, okay, these are separate projects. But no, I mean, um, that's been crazy as well. That again, that was about two years ago that I started writing that. It was round about when Streets of Rage Four got announced because I'm like, right, I knew I wanted to kind of do it. And a friend of mine, Chris Scullion, who's a Scottish games journalist as well, um, and has written, he's written like the NES Encyclopedia, the SNES Encyclopedia, and I think his Mega Drive one comes out in like two weeks. Um, I asked him. Again, going back to putting yourself out there and asking people for advice, I said, okay, how easy is it? I mean, I know it's not easy, but how easy is it to write a coffee table book about video games? Like getting a publisher, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And he was like, really helpful. Like just said, okay, here's the things you need to look out for, the things you need to consider, flat plans, planning out your page count, what level of research are you doing, finding a publisher. Um, so yeah, massive props to him for that. But um, I thought, okay, Streets of Rage 4 has just been announced. I've been waiting for me, like Streets of Rage 2 is my favorite game ever, not just fighting game, like ever. So I'm like, oh God, they've actually done it. They've actually announced 4, I can't believe it. And I thought, right, I'm going to do the book because what a great what a great game to end on. It's come full circle. And now the genre's back in this massive way, right? You've got the new Turtles beat em up games from Tributes coming out yes. um, next year, I think. Yes. River City Girls 2 has been announced. Um, that River City, River City Girls 1 is so good. So, so it's great, good. right? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, there's even more coming out. And I'm like, okay, this is perfect. I mean, the genre is clearly coming back in a big way. Then that took me two years to write. <laughs> it's the biggest <laughs> thing I've ever written. Um, and I played about 200, I think it was 208 games I played for it. Wow. Literally is uh, almost, wow. I say... There's a lot of asterisks I need to point out, but almost every game in the genre. Some of the games now, the ROMs have been delisted and you cannot get the BIOS files anywhere. So I had to mention them in passing, but I couldn't actually play them, um, yeah. which is annoying. Was but, that um, playing to completion or playing to have an opinion? To review. <laughs> uh, to be honest, the games are quite short in this genre. So um, I, some of them were so bad I couldn't face finishing them. There we go. <laughs> uh, like, uh, what's a good example? Uh, the Tick. Uh, based on the comic. No, uh, how dare oh, really? you? Really? Really? <laughs> I don't know. I have, no, nice version. I have no horse in this fight. I don't know. <laughs> Very um, quickly, um, it, it ends on Streets of Rage 4, but you were talking about the fact that it was going to end with Streets of Rage 4 before that game released. Were you given early access to the game because of this project? Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I, I even and that's, <laughs> that's entirely the reason you decided to write the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you've got me. <laughs> um, no, no, I mean, it was you, like, I, yeah. I actually interviewed the, the developer about it as well for the feature because it was a big it ends on like a six page Streets of Rage 4 feature that really goes into yes. like there's some cool facts like I don't want to spoil too much about it but some of the write ups are like a straight like here's just my opinion on the game from a technical having played every game in the genre and I'm like here's what works here's what doesn't but you should still maybe check it out kind of thing there's also tips, trivia, some making of I don't go too heavy in the making of because of, like I mentioned things that are genuinely interesting. Because I, I want I want you to get a feel, it's almost like a buyer's guide. I want you to get a feel for what the games are like and hopefully try them. Um, so uh, 
yeah, so like some of the some of the bits about Streets of Rage Four was like a single character in that game took one month to draw and animate full time really? working weekends as well because wow. there's one guy that does all the art for the game pretty much. Yeah, uh, Ben Fiquet, who's like this French animator, he's amazing. But he was like, yeah, took a month non-stop <laughs> one character so, and scene. And yeah scene. so yeah yeah so there's gonna be loads of like facts and stuff in there and uh, fun little things so yeah looking forward to so, see what people think so um yeah I, you uh I, I know you love video games like as, as much as i do and what? i know you kill i know you killed <laughs> sam yeah they are surprised again uh <laughs> the man who just talked about playing 208 video games of the same genre <laughs> Just to write a book <laughs> and has also talked in depth about every other. I was a journalist. Oh my goodness, Un- he loves games. Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. I'm sorry to state the obvious, Sam. Uh, but... <laughs> but you're also a collector as well, Dave, which is where I was going with that. Um, I, I have seen you on, on Twitter and Instagram occasionally showing off some of the stuff that you have. Is there anything in your collection that, that you, like, you're like most proud of? What one thing would you say that you would. You would never ever get rid of. Um, I, I can think I can, I can think of a few, but definitely the one that's a cut above is so they only they only made these for the gaming press. Um, it's a mm. gold Ducktales NES cart that works. Oh, I know the one. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Nice. I think nice. um, and it comes in like this like old school tin tin like lunchbox with a yeah. old school car, uh, Ducktales uh, cartoon on it. And inside's yeah. like a Scrooge McDuck uh, dollar and like little yeah. things. Um, <laughs> that's great. Um, I actually one time when I was really hard up, almost sold it, and I'm really glad I didn't because I, I didn't want to sell it. But I was like, you know, between between contracts and stuff, and I was like, oh man. But yeah, that's definitely the rarest one. I think it, I think at one point it went for something like two grand. But I I I, I don't buy these things to sell them. I Not buy them to play them. No. So it has you been played. Them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I think there's a few other things like um, I got a Metal Gear Solid art book, which is signed by Yoji Shinkawa and um, uh, Hideo Kojima. I met them both at an event in London. I love to try that one out. I you usually, show all the time, yeah. I usually post it when I'm like feeling, feeling low and I'm like, ah, better times. That was, that was good. Good times, good times. Yeah. What's your um, white whale when it comes to collect? Oh yeah, good chat. Oh, um, <laughs> or it doesn't need to be that the actual ultimate white whale, but the first thing that comes to mind if I ask you, what are you looking for? The, the something, something I almost bought last last year. I uh, wasn't like, yeah, or some, uh, Streets of Rage three boxed, complete, like the complete edition, but specifically the Japanese version, which is way no, superior. Cool. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. they. So long story short, this is in the book as well. When they brought, don't give it all away. Don't give it all away. <laughs> oh, well, this is like common knowledge. So when they there's brought, plenty more, there's plenty more. Yeah. yeah, when they brought Streets of Rage three over to the West, they thought, oh yeah, those Western gamers like really hard games compared to Japan. Don't know why they thought that. And they just made it <laughs> annoying, like not even like a good challenge hard. They made it annoyingly hard. More enemies, less lives, enemies that hit harder, and it's just it's just not as good as the Japanese version. Um, which is way more balanced and the color palettes are wrong in the, the western version but right in the japanese it's like the thing is i almost bought it in japan last january last uh last february sorry last march two days before covid hit yeah and i was gonna go back to super potato to buy it with my leftover spending money because we had loads left over because me and my wife are kind of we don't go on holiday often and we're like we forget how to have fun <laughs> So we were like really tight and like on a budget. We're like, no, we saved that for all year for this. Like, what the hell? So we were meant to go back to Osaka to get our flight home to Glasgow. Um, um but then COVID hit, so we had to get on an emergency flight home, and I couldn't buy it. I was oh, like, damn it! I forgot. So to that's quite well. I'm gonna get it next time I you, go um, find it. But, I remember um, you almost got stuck in Japan because of COVID. I forgot you were there when uh, when it when everything sort of went down. It was. Uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh yeah, that was uh, that was. Uh, it feels like a lifetime ago now, but that that was scary, scary stuff. Like, yeah, I actually yeah. found out that our flight home got cancelled while we were just about to go into the Kirby Cafe <laughs> uh, oh, for my... lunch. So I'm so happy. Then I was just like, sort of, uh, oh, <laughs> eating my, my my pink my pink uh, Kirby burger with a little Kirby face on it. Really kind of annoyed. 
Oh, no. <laughs> it's staring at you with love in its eyes. No, I hate you. I oh, hate everything you represent, Kirby. Like, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems like a lifetime ago. But yeah, that, that's that's the one. Uh, Streets of Rage. Sorry, Bare Knuckle, Bare Knuckle 3 Japanese version. Nice, nice. Cool. Um, Dave, we're going to finish off um, our little segment um, with uh, the quick fire round, which, uh, which we do every week. Now, it's not painful, don't worry. You've not had these questions in advance, so you don't know what's coming. Um, but uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna fire in. And just answer as fast as you can. Uh, no need to think too much about it. Okay. Cool. I'm, gonna turn, I'm gonna turn the music off for this one. Actually, okay, here we go. You right. Get like um, the weakest link. <laughs> 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 totally. Okay. Dave, you ready? Go for it. Okay. Cheese and onion or salt and vinegar? Salt and vinegar. Oh, nice. Uh, bath or shower? Shower. Sure. Okay. Adam, Axel, or Blaze? Axel. Oh. Okay. Best Schwarzenegger film? Commando. Nice. Nice. Uh, symmetrical or asymmetrical thumbsticks? I thought you know what the difference are. Oh, um, asymmetrical. Asymmetrical Xbox. 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 Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, the age-old question: Pirates versus ninjas. Who wins? Nin ninjas. Ninjas. Nice. Always. Uh, Indian or Chinese for dinner? Oh, 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 uh, Chinese. <laughs> Chinese Purely okay. because they do salt, salt and pepper chili wings. Uh, chili wings, they're oh, my favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, uh, my friend from school, her parents' uh, Chinese takeaway is the originator of the salt and chili pizza crunch. Oh, I've seen that. Oh, God. Mm, nice. Uh, okay, last question. Uh, it's 1998. Your gran has given you £60 to spend on whatever you want for your birthday. What do you buy? Uh, ooh, ew. Um, presuming I don't have the things already, we're talking like purely, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Boxed came out ooh. that year, I believe, or was it 97? I, I think it was 97, but I'll give you it. You can probably still get it. Um, in um, I'm just thinking of what I got for Christmas that year. Um, a copy of Beastie Boys' Hello Nasty, which is one nice. of my favorite. <laughs> Sweet. Ooh, yeah, nice, it's one of my favorite. Nice. I've got it on vinyl over there somewhere. Um, nice, nice. Well, that, that doesn't even get me close. What else? Um, no. Sixty pound was a lot back then. It was. <laughs> what now? Um, probably just more games. Uh, Sh Shinobi Three on Mega Drive, if I could find it, because I I'm missing that one from my collection box as well, which is annoying. Um, probably like some Simpsons DVDs. I loved the Simpsons back then. Um, <laughs> loved it. South Park. I had South Park VHS tapes back then as well. The old wow. ones, the original wow. ones. Wow. Um, and then probably some sort of. Oh, uh, yeah. a, Shock, a Rumble Jewel Shock pad for my PlayStation. Ah, okay. Is that they came in round about ninety six, seven, something they like did. that? And they, they were yeah. they were like the game changers, complete game changers. Right. Having the the Jewel uh, Shock. Bad boys here, yeah. 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 My camera's up there, yeah. Um, I, know, I probably got those years all wrong for when those things came out, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. You did well. You're all right. You're good. All right. Um, very aware of time. Nothing about you, Dave. Dave, on. <laughs> Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being a, a good sport. And uh, I look forward to getting my copy of Killtopia 4 in the mail very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's do a bit of this really fast. This, ladies and gentlemen, oh, I forgot to do that. This, ladies and gentlemen, is yesterday's news. This is where I uh, trawl through the history of video games and find something interesting that happened on this day or within this week back in the past. Uh, you can see by the, <laughs> the title on the screen uh, that um, um, it was actually today, October 7th, 2003, Nokia released the N-Gage gaming telephone or mobile phone. Um, it, uh, it was the first of its kind. It was Nokia basically trying to go up against the Nintendo Game Boy Advance um, in the, the portable gaming realm. Um, and it was awful. It was absolutely awful. I owned one. It was my first ever contract phone. And I, I thought I was making a great decision, and I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> it got nicknamed the Taco Phone. Um, because the speaker and microphone were on the top of the device, so you had to hold it like that against your, which basically gave you a giant ear. Um, and uh, in North America, in its, uh, its first few weeks, 
the Game Boy Advance outsold it 100 to 1. So for every end gauge that was sold, 100 Game Boy Advances were sold. It's absolute madness. I've got a couple of, uh, of adverts actually from 2003 to show you um, of, of what they tried to, how they tried to market it in the UK. Um, because it was actually uh, capable of multiplayer through Bluetooth or uh, online as well, actually, if you had um, a mobile phone contract that had an internet connection. Um, and uh, and it was it was god awful. But this is um this is a wee advert from two thousand and three of the device itself. Here you go. It's um. This looks like it's kind of creepy. Cumbernauld. It says this is where I got a good beating. Careful now. Sure. <laughs> this is where she showed me who was boss. What? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this is where I came back to life. <laughs> Oh man, I love Misfits. <laughs> oh man. So that was the Nokia N gauge. Um, they tried it's to be shocking. I think it was that era. It's using font like you wouldn't steal a car. Dun dun. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, it's totally it's amazing. Um, yeah, so yeah, they're they trying to be shocking. I think with the uh, with the adverts. There's the there's this one as well. I can show this one off in the background while we talk. Um, and yeah, I think it was that era when Xbox was out as well, where the, 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 the sort of viral marketing advertising that we were trying to do was trying to shock people. You know, PlayStation had the crazy bug eye lady and um, Xbox had that ridiculous advert where the um, child was born and then flew out the, the room through the air, aged and then landed in a cemetery, um, which they got, um, which got banned actually, funnily enough. All of, but, it um, <laughs> all of it should have been banned. All of it should have been banned, yeah. It was a complete disaster. Uh, complete disaster, sorry. Um, it released in 2003. They did a second version in 2004 called the QD, which wasn't any better. The, the One of the worst things about it was if you wanted to change the game, you had to physically remove the battery from the phone to put the new game in and then put the battery back in the phone. So you had to turn the phone off to put the game in. That was the first edition. It was so bad. Oh, God. So, so... <laughs> Um, but it's um, but yeah, it was, it was awful. It was discontinued in two thousand and six. Just came out, uh, and Nokia sold, I think, about one third of what they expected to sell at the end of the day, which was less than a million units, I think. Um, you know what's funny? So I yeah, worked, huge commercial. I worked in game when that came out, and I remember all the staff when it came in saying, "Who would want to play games on their phone?" <laughs> <laughs> and, and here we are, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you were a journalist? Uh, <laughs> the staff at Game weren't. No, no, I was also uh, a game staff member when that came out actually in uh, in 2003. Um, oh. I was uh, I was really disappointed. I don't know why I bought one or got a contract. Anyway, um, yeah, no, what I wanted to say was has there been any other um, sort of electronics or even anything that you've sort of been a first adopter of or first person to get that you've been disappointed by in the past? Um, Sam, anything that comes to mind for you? Uh, not that I, it doesn't apply to any of the words you just said, but the little cube mem that you get the different <laughs> cubes and you would stack them together in different shapes. And the men in the cubes would go into each other's cubes and like fight each other or like play <gasps> games those. together. And then they would go back to their own and they would live in the cubes. And they did quite a lot with that, in all fairness. But I feel like it doesn't get enough enough recognition for how <laughs> wacky and strange it was, and it should come back. That is my hot take. <laughs> okay, nice, nice, nice. Dave, uh, anything that's severely disappointed you in the past? Not, not as an early adopter, but um, <laughs> I, I did get a barcode battler when I was a kid and thought it was. Oh yeah, I've seen I, I thought you were going to get to see like actual characters like generate from barcodes, but it was just numbers, and I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> I'm going to scan a tin of peas and make it fight. I don't know my my bus pass or I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, there is. Sam, um, what was the sc- what was the scanner thing that you um you used to talk about? I had it on my phone. I had something very similar to that on my phone where you would scan QR codes, uh, not QR codes, uh, but barcodes, and it would turn them into footballers. I played um, that a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I found out about the scanners and stuff like that through a, through a YouTube video. Uh, very quickly, um, there, the name of the thing I was talking about was called Cube World. Ah, Cube and World. The, the, same, the same guy who made the video about the scanners that I've seen, Billiam, He's also got a video on Cube World. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just search Cube World was weird and you'll get the explanation of what that was. Nice, nice. Cool. 
All right, um, let's crash into our last section, of course, our uh, last segment. Um, Nokia, don't... Oh, but Nokia's not around anymore. Um, you, you failed. Please don't try again. Uh, <laughs> this is where... Do you not see it, Andrew? This is where I came back to life. <laughs> this is where I took a good beating. That advert is so bad. This is where uh, Susie whipped me, Jesus. This is where Sibby... No, Susie showed me his box. No, it's um, like, this is where Susie whipped me. <laughs> I was was that? Oh, was that the second? Oh, just, oh, there's a oh, different dear. one. Oh dear! Oh dear! I've blanked it from my mind. All right, uh, oh, let's uh, let's do the last thing. Moving on. Here we go. America, America. America, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Rush Mountmore. Uh, Sam, do you want to go with this? What's what's You will on? address me as Uncle Sam when it's time for okay, Rush Mountmore. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Rush Mountmore. It is the game where we come up with a prompt for another member of the show and they have 30 seconds to give us their top four in no particular order for that idea. Basically, think of the four old dead white men that are on the side of a mountain in the US. That's what we're kind of doing right now, but usually with weird and wacky things like kinds of bread, Game Boy Advance games or hats we don't own. It's always different, it's always personal to the individual, and it's always quite fun. It's also the most low-rent version of this you will see anywhere, and this is our timer. Hello. <laughs> so, All right. um, Andrew, you have yeah. me this week, so someone else actually needs to time. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my phone. I've got it, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, Sam, I've got Sam this week, and... No, timer. Call right. on the power it's of Grayskull. Here we go. That's not how they do this. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Sam? Uh, I'm going to steal from last week's show um, and oh, yeah. ask you, please, what are your top four, in any order, um, of Power Rangers theme tunes? Oh, you prick. Uh, <laughs> Time Force is number one because Time Force is the best series of Power Rangers in every respect because of the insane of budgets, etc. Um yeah. Lost Galaxy actually slaps. I'm going to use that link. It it, Lost Galaxy is the weird middle child between the two series, but the theme tune is great. Um, Ninja Storm is, is actually okay. pretty good as well. I'm trying not to say the original one. I'll say Dino Thunder because it's around the same oh, time. Oh, well done. Just get in there. Um, nice. With zero seconds to spare. I well will done. say, well like, done. so Lost Galaxy, right? And I don't know if this will come through on the, on the microphone, but Lost Galaxy was in between... Um, Time Force, which is my favourite of all time, came after it, I believe, and, uh, oh, did it? I'm second guess. <laughs> no, sorry, that's not true. Uh, Time Force came after Lightspeed Rescue, because that was the tie-in. Anyway, Lost Galaxy came after In Space, which is widely re regarded to be the best series of Power Rangers in terms of thematics. It was the end of the Zordon saga, which had spanned five series before that. So you had this big dramatic climax, and they were like, how do we up the stakes and the answer was all the humans now live on a floating earth that's like part of a giant <laughs> turtle robot but the opening sting was it was like power rangers galaxy far far away to a place in a galaxy they'll go power rangers go power rangers go power rangers go it had no right to have the amount of energy that it brought to a series yes. that was like that. How yes. do we start this anew? So Lost Galaxy was a good pick. I like that um, you're so used to being on Discord that your that Discord normally cuts out all of the good bits of your 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 speech and your acting. Um, but we get it all here, so thank you for. I didn't. I only asked for your top four. I didn't ask for a rendition of any of them. But I'm sorry. Um, you I'm... asked me a Power Rangers question, and I don't talk about that enough. Apparently. That's the I'm quality glad, you I'm get here I... on the arcade uh, uh, cast. I, I, I'm garbage at what we're actually here for. <laughs> but I can, you know, the things that I have knowledge on. Anyway, okay. I have Dave this week. Yes, Sam. So Good. I can do the timing now, Dave. It, yeah. We talked about Kiltopia, but we didn't explain sort of like the story of it. And one of the major uh, influences that you have mentioned in previous interviews is the film Battle Royale. So my question <sighs> for you, with thirty seconds on the timer, is: What are your top four favorite kills in Battle Royale? Ooh. Oh, 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 god! Um, <laughs> the, the poison in the lighthouse is pretty brutal. That's mad. Um, you have 
Oh my god, I forgot I forgot the monitor. Oh, the bit when the teacher throws the uh, uses the remote control on the girl at the start. That's just uh, the guy on the start is an example. That's mad. Yeah. Um, there's the guy who gets his eyeballs like melted at the end, um, and there is oh my god the hatchet girl the... oh he just oh. makes it he just makes it <laughs> since we've been doing this with special guests none of them have done what we all did at the very beginning of this bit where we like run out of time thinking of a fourth so well done well done, <laughs> well done <laughs> what um, is yours nice. for andrew okay i'm ready so andrew what are your in no order what are your top four instant ramen flavors Ah, oh, uh, okay, top uh, tonkatsu pork, no doubt about it, with the uh, black garlic oil. Um, second would be just straight up kimchi. Kimchi's, uh, kim put kimchi on anything, it's amazing. Um, I'm going to go Indomie, but not the classic mi goreng. I'm going to go with uh, uh, sati, sati flavor, mi Indomie, which is my, my favorite of all time. Uh, and finally, I do love a shin, just a straight up, you know, just pure spice, not too hot, just hot. Love a I, shin Excellent choice there, uh, Dave. And a question that we've not had on this show before, surprisingly. <laughs> I can't it's believe not, that. Yeah. <laughs> you said it and I was like, oh, oh, okay, yeah. I How did we not ask that? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we were, too, we were too busy going too fast because that has been Russian Nine more. That and that has been much. all of our segments. Thank you very much. Um, Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, you, as, as we, we've touched upon throughout the show, you've got Killtopia 4 just finished on Kickstarter. Um, BPM is currently on Patreon, and you can check that out via the links that we put in the chat. Um, you've got Ghost Street coming out um, next year, which is going to be amazing. Uh, is there anything else that you're up to that we should know about? Anything else that or is, have we covered everything? We tried. Have you got uh, any scoops? One, one more thing, like if you follow me on Twitter, we have we have just signed the contract to work on our first licensed comic. Uh, I can't say any more about it, but I think if you follow my Ooh. stuff and everything you've just mentioned there, you're gonna love it and really, yeah, nice. yeah. So yeah, nice. Nice. should be able to reveal that soon, hopefully. Awesome, awesome, Dave. Thank you so much for being on the show, um, and uh, and yeah, it's, it's it's been great, Sam. Um, good work, well done. Thank you. Um, if you want to, if you missed any of the Please. show, if you want to catch up, then oh, Please, do I have a career in this? <laughs> hey man, the, you know the mantra of the night was uh, keep learning and keep keep learning and just keep persevere. Going. And keep yeah. going. Don't be annoying. Don't be too annoying, but keep going. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm hearing is don't sing Power Rangers theme tunes at the guests. All right. <laughs> That's um, I can do that. Yeah. If you missed any of the show, then you can always catch up on YouTube. If you go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash go, it will be online later this evening. Um, and if you, as I say, are a fan of the podcast um, format, then you can catch on our Spotify uh, by searching for the Super Arcade Show on Spotify itself. A couple of last minute plugs for Arcade in general tonight. Right Over. now, it is Film Club. It is Spooktober. And it is the very first movie that we're doing, which is Get Out. So you can join Michelle for that. Um, no stream on here tomorrow night, but we are back open again from 12 o'clock, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you've not booked in advance already, you can on the website, rkglasgow.com forward slash book. This Saturday is the culmination, ladies and gentlemen, of everything we've been doing here at RK Glasgow's Wrestling Club. That's kind of an exaggeration, but it's also not. <laughs> if you know, you already know. If you don't know and you want to see a Japanese pop idol winning a world championship against a lady that kicks people's heads off, you're going to have to get into the wrestling club and come watch it with Best us. Best description ever. Best description. There's ever. also 16th century French vampires versus two people with way too much energy, one of which is a rabbit, the other is a genie. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I've sold it for everyone. I, yeah, I'm still confused, but yeah, that's, that sounds great. Wow, wow. Um, guys, have a great night. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week for another Super Arcade show. Everyone say bye! Peace. Bye!